So what do you, I mean, my theory is that COVID was not about COVID nor the vaccine. Sure. So it wasn't about the vaccine. Mm -hmm. It was not about the virus. Mm -hmm. It was about control. Yeah. It was a psychological exam to see what occurs within society because there's not one person on the planet that is the same person after COVID, including strong-willed, strong-minded people like myself, like mm -hmm. yourself. Everything we do operates differently because of COVID. Now, if you were a evil mastermind, what would you do to gain control? You would fuck with people beyond their own capabilities. They can't even, they're not even, it's, it's, it, they're unrecognizable in some instances. So if you want to take over a society or a culture, if you will, you start with the kids. You start with the youngest generation possible and you completely mind fuck everything where they can't even remember what life was like beforehand. Well, there was no life beforehand. They're so young. Exactly. They have no clue. They have no clue. So now, I don't think that, I mean, I think that they use the mRNA technology for their own advancements in certain things. They're not going to pass up the opportunity for it. However, I think that it was just to gain complete control over the people and the people being the younger generation because at the end of the day, the boomers now just sound fucking stupid. Mm -hmm. They are so old, so disgusted, so distraught about life and everything that they've been through that now they sound crazy, they sound ridiculous. They don't even make sense whenever they speak. Oh, man. And then you have the people that are like, well, I'm a Gen Xer. And you're like, oh, Jesus Christ, here we go with you. You know what I mean? So now they even sound crazy. Yeah. So it is all about control and manipulation of the mind. And everybody knows, even as a parent, you are able to manipulate your children to do something. You can coerce them to do something. Hey, if you do this, if you do X, you get Y. If you just do this, I'll give you a treat like an animal. So you're conditioning them. So we have had that on a mass level with the human population of all ages. And we beat them into the ground like an abusive relationship. School. I have three children, two of them in school. One is homeschooled now. Mm -hmm. The other is an absolute fucking savage, Adeline. I don't think you could, you could probably fucking... She don't care. She's not going to get swayed. She That kid is so strong-minded yeah, with her yeah. is set in her ways. However, watching what occurred with all these children and how they act and interact with each other and what's going on, it is nothing like the yester. So, watching it occur, and then we also have a gymnastics facility where 350 people, 350 kids come through our doors every single week. Mm -hmm. So, we see them and in an extracurricular uh, setting. So, it's not school. It's them outside of school, and we can see and watch them grow because we've had this place for four years now. We also have, that means 350, diff 350 different sets of parents also come through the doors and also talk about school, their experiences, and everything that they've seen. And like I say with everything, all you have to do in life is pay attention. You just got to listen. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to talk. I'm going to listen to the parents. I'm going to listen to all 350 of these motherfuckers talk and tell me the stories that's going on in their schools, and then I'm just going to... Absorb the information, pay attention, and make my own observations about what's occurring. Am I going to have an opinion with what they do? Nope, I ain't saying shit. I'm going to keep it to myself and form my own mm -hmm. concepts and ideas from what's going on. So whenever you have parents telling me and Hannah, mostly Hannah, uh, <laughs> that there are litter boxes in the bathrooms for the kids that identify as cats, there are... That's here in PA. That's, that's legit? Oh, Yes. We have about six to seven different school districts in the area that come to our gymnastics facility. That's not as bad as what I was about to fucking tell him. About. The letter I got from Orange County for the public school. Oh, so, so yeah. and, and what I'm That's saying is now, because now we have to be super inclusive because we don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. All this touchy-feely shit has taken over and, and STEM, engineering, mathematics, mm -hmm. science, has taken a back seat. We're now even interfering with science, stating that you're not who you think you are. Even though you're born with testicles and a penis, you can be something else. And it's like, hold the fuck on. Mm -hmm. You can be a motherfucking cat if you want to. And I'll accept your identification as such. I, you, you see people that are like, I'm a clown. I'm clown self. Oh, Jesus fucking God in heaven, are you serious? Touchy-feely shit has taken over and logical things are gone. Well, they change is, what the idea of science is. Well, it, it, so, 
but other we have as a country. That That's was the I mean. goal. Yeah, so yeah. and notice that after COVID, after COVID, mm-hmm. all this has become super, super strong. So now here's my thing. Don't you find it kind of funny that before COVID, you had uh, pro-lifers stating uh, or, or pro um, people that were pro-choice saying, my body, my choice, right? All these pro-choice people, my body, my choice. Now, and then people that were pro-life were like, no, go, dude, that ain't right. Abortion's wrong. Okay. And then whenever it comes to something that you think would be so black and white, then comes the the one hundredth of a percent of rape and, and, and incest and mm-hmm. things that we all agree are super fucked. Mm-hmm. Okay. But after COVID, during it with the vaccine and all of the shit, now all of the people that were pro life are stating my body, my choice, saying, don't stick that fucking vaccine in me. Mm-hmm. I ain't taking that motherfucker. Mm-hmm. You ain't doing it. Now, don't you find it kind of funny that such a plan was executed at such a high level and with complete intent. And now you have both sides saying my body, my choice and catching each other in hypocritical statements. Mm -hmm. Don't you find that fucking insane? Well, the population's so weak though, in their mind, the population's so weak. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the mob, right? Yeah. The mob is so weak minded, which is why they were able to manipulate them through history. But for sure, but it's with with uh, with those with all that are going on that those things were not accidents. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. they were not accidents. These villains of the world, these elitists or villains or whoever you want to state are, these people are executing a plan mm-hmm. with such precision, with such intent that we might think that like they're complete fucking oh. morons. No. The politicians are complete fucking morons. Like they are really dumb. You got didn't you guys elect a brain dead senator? <clears throat> yeah. However, <laughs> I did not. However, they are just puppets, and everybody's starting to see it because it's like there's no, there's not even any. You don't even see any free thinking. You don't even see anything that's even like, oh my god, you're so enlightened and mm-hmm. this. No, it's either this way or this way. And you're like, motherfuckers, both of you side, both sides are all fucked up. Oh yeah, you guys are both fucked. You guys are like seriously pieces of shit because nothing has changed in the decades that they've been in. All forever, all the time. It's a business. Yes. Politics is a business. You go in there to get rich. Mm-hmm. And they go in to get rich by just being told what to do by the corporations, which oh, are the elitists. Of course. Yeah. Well, they're, they're, they're elected by corporations, not elected by people. No. You know, it's basically a shoe-in. Once you get enough funding, you're good. You're in. But I always found, I swear, that's my take on it, and I'm just watching it happen. <sighs> so I think that, yeah, I think we're at a point of no return. I think we are. Like I said, I, I, don't, I don't see a scenario where it turns around. There's, there's no scenario that I can come up with in my head where that can do a 180 and get back to what we would consider normal. And everybody normalcy. everybody's stating that, like, say I just made that statement. They're mm-hmm. like, you're a fucking asshole. You're a piece of shit. There's no fucking way that's going to happen, Seth. Listen, all you have to do is pay attention to everything going on. Now, I hope I'm dead wrong. However, their plan is not today Mm -hmm. their plan is not the 2024 election their plan is not the 2028 election their plan is not the 2032 election their plan is decades down the road Mm -hmm. they do nothing quickly if you haven't noticed we think that we're back from covid and covid was three years ago do you remember what was going on three years ago on march 10th 2020 it was fucking mayhem. We were right on the very beginning of what we thought was the apocalypse. Yeah. Whenever now we look back and say, so it was the flu. And people were fighting over toilet paper and paper towels and in the year 2020. Yeah, the, f- the fuck that thing is they can do it all over again when they, whenever they want to do they it. Will. And they will. This do, is going to happen just the same way. And that's the crazy thing because all you got to do is just, you don't, even, you don't have to be, you do not have to be a scientist you don't have to no. be a fucking surgeon you don't got to be shit you just got to pay attention and just be aware and absorb all the information and watch it all occur i mean that's why we homeschool emmy we ha- we have a homeschool program now we homeschool them because if you saw what was going on in schools and 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 what how they operate 
you'd be like, I don't really like this. So PA PA leans a little bit to <clears throat> one side, I think. I, I know you guys don't. I know a lot of the state doesn't. But basically, Philly and Pittsburgh kind of dictate everything. Everything. So, you know, like I was joking earlier, you guys elected a brain dead senator. He actually is literally brain dead. He has mental problems. Can't think. He's in a hospital mm-hmm. right now. Um, so your school system makes sense. They're probably a little messed up. Is a little left leaning. What do we just see in Florida, which is supposedly the freest state in the country? Mm-hmm. Orange County, live in Orlando. Yeah. So Orange County is one of the more left leaning counties liberal. They're liberal. in Florida. Where did you get the letter on? Because he has a five year old daughter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm. I'm. You know, the internal struggle with me is, what am I going to do with her? Am I going to pull? Her? She's she's five years old. Yeah. She's in kindergarten. You know, she's she's coming home telling me about. Um, you know, this kid has two dads, and, and, and they're, again, don't care, right? Yeah. The fact that that conversation needs to be had, I'm okay with it. Sure. It, it is what it is. I get a letter from the county that we live in saying that some schools in the district will have gender-neutral restrooms. Oh, no go. Elementary school. No go. They said, you know, it's kind of like a don't be surprised if you see this. Bitch, I'm very surprised yeah. reading this. Yes. Right? So that, that led me to... You know, I don't overreact about anything, but I looked at Amber and I said, we got to come up with another plan because this shit ain't going to work. And like I just said earlier, it's not going to turn around. Mm-hmm. You don't go to gender neutral and transgender elementary school restrooms and then take them away. No. It just goes to the next step. Yes. So what's the next step after that? And here's the thing. Which, 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 we're, Apparently, we're next, step's edu- next step's education. Next step mm-hmm. is we're going to have <clears throat> programs in place in these schools that are going to indoctrinate your children this is my biggest problem same in life same. i do not care if you are gay don't care i don't care if you're a transgender i don't care same. if you're white or black i don't care if you want to jump between fucking women and fucking men i don't care if you like eating pussy or sucking dick i don't give yep. two flying fucks what you do cut your tits off get a dick cut your dick off get a set of tits you can do whatever it is that you want to with your life because this is a free fucking country don't expect everybody to like it mm-hmm. because i was a fucking sauce head and people didn't like it mm-hmm. that's perfectly fine just stay the fuck away from the kiddos with mm-hmm. that. let the kiddos grow up and not have sexuality be on the forefront of it all straight or gay Mm -hmm. don't do it yeah like i'm not taking my fucking eight-year-old to hooters okay that's not happening unfortunately hooters is mild how about you're just not taking them to a strip club well what i mean is it doesn't just no sexuality at all like why are we having the conversation about it at such a young age whenever we have grown fucking adults trying to figure out if they are gay or straight if they want to go through a transition, like a grown ass motherfucker with a fully developed brain can't figure it the fuck out. Mm-hmm. And you're telling me that we want children to do so? I thought we established that children shouldn't do certain things until certain ages, like 18, 21, smoke mm-hmm. cigarettes, drink alcohol, fucking vote. But you can chop your dick off when you're a fucking child? Give me a fucking break. Yeah, it's fucking gross. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. I have, uh, I, I'm, debating whether I'm going to go on. I have a news station that wants to interview me. So our PR team has been going after stuff and they want to interview me on the idea of banning hormone therapy for children under the age of 18. And I'm like, why are you asking about it? It's transgender stuff. That's what they want. It's a yeah. hot ticket item. You know, it's a, it's yeah. a hot topic. So they're like, you know, what's your, you know, do you want to go talk about this? I'm like, I'll talk about it. I'm like, you do realize we're going to get a shitload of hate about this, right? Yes. They're like, we get it. I said, okay, all right, so we're, we're, we're scheduling this. It's probably going to be the next month, and they want to have me on as a, you know expert and an owner in the industry to talk about this stuff. And what I'm going to basically you know, surround the conversation on is the mental issues that come with hormone therapy. Yes. How different do you feel when your testosterone is optimized compared to how your testosterone is in the tank? Man, this is going to be such a wonderful conversation. Different person. Yeah. Different person. <laughs> Way different person, yeah. dude. I mean, here, before I answer that question, okay. I'd like to introduce you to, to the world of the HWMF community so that we understand what's going on. Perfect. Um, we have two individuals who have been a, uh, uh, a pretty crucial role in my personal life right now. Everyone, I'd like you to meet Tomo and Nick Marjanovic. They own, uh, Tomo is the owner of uh, Aspire Rejuvenation. You've heard me talk quite a bit about uh, that HRT clinic on here. Mm-hmm. Uh, you guys have done wonderful things for me. Optimize my testosterone, as we have said here. I still, I'm not going to lie, you guys notice I'm a little thicker. 
I love growth hormone. I know that's not part of the program. However, I like to bend the rules a little we bit. We do prescribe growth hormone. Maybe not at the dose that you may like. <laughs> not at that dose. <laughs> or the price point. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I still uh, I still know the black market uh, from a surface, from a scratch of surface. The level. hat's off to yes. them. Yes. <laughs> I will always have a little bit in me. Um, but no, I mean, uh, so you own Aspire Rejuvenation. We've done, we've been friends together for quite some time now. We have. Um, I met Nick, you know, through this whole process of you taking over and running Aspire Rejuvenation. And uh, you were a police officer prior to this. 12 years. Uh, worked in Ohio, up in the Cleveland area, and then Clearwater, Florida, and uh, left that wonderful law enforcement career and uh, got into the clinic industry and started our own clinics in 2019. Yeah. You, I met you in 2016 at the Arnold Classic. Or was, was it the, 20, was the Olympia? No. It was, it was the Arnold, you're right. It was the Arnold in 2016 or 2017. Mm -hmm. I was at the Blackstone Labs booth. That's right. And uh, I was having the, because uh, that's, we just started doing the, um, the Blue Line AAR shirts. Yep. You were like, this is fucking awesome. Like, because not many people at that time were on social media pushing, you know, just being a good motherfucker. It was yep. all, that was, you know, the shreds days. Oh, yeah. You know, whenever you were fucking just complete douchebag and the cars and the fake cars and the fake broads and the rented, the rented cars and the hookers. That was wild times. Literally was rented cars and hookers. I know. It was, was awesome. Crazy. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> it was a wild time. But um, yeah, we met then um, and we, uh, we just stayed in touch the whole entire time. Yeah. And then whenever you started doing this, that's whenever uh, a year later, I tore my tricep in 2020 mm -hmm. and then got with Prisk and he got me all straightened out. And then uh, we started talking more about everything with hormones. And you were like, hey, why don't we just help keep you on track and just make that a forefront of what we're doing here? So I was like, OK, cool. It'd be great. Yeah. Uh, and it has been wonderful. And if anybody is searching for an HRT clinic, we will talk to Tomo and Nick and you will get to learn the ins and outs of the business and a lot of the taboo stuff. Because you also like pushing the envelope, if you haven't been able to tell everyone. Yes. <laughs> I, I push the envelope quite a bit. Uh, I, it's, it's funny. When I started in business, I was trying to be very, very uh, neutral with everything. Yeah. And then I realized that my personality is definitely not that. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm an ex-cop. I'm extremely conservative. I'm extremely traditional. Um, I'm big on business. I'm big on, uh, you know, values when it comes to just how I think and feel. People are so scared to talk about their values and what they think, what they feel, what they're into, uh, what they believe, what they don't believe. And, it, it, you know, when I had, when I hid that, I felt lost. Yeah. You know, and people get scared when they're in business. I mean, yes. I, I would think when you are giving all of your information out, right, when uh -huh. you are your, your true self, your business goes up. Yeah. I think so. Yes. Because if you're going to lose anybody, it's probably not customers anyway. They're probably no. not clients anyway. No. And, and, I think, uh, and I think one thing that we've been discussing for the past 20 minutes was that uh, in society, it has been lost to be able to have conversations. Oh, yeah. And once people actually find out that I'm not a complete piece of shit, I just want to make sure that we hit every conversation from every single angle. Mm -hmm. Like, I can be wrong. I don't mind being wrong. It's okay. But if I'm right and you're wrong, then it's okay to admit that you're wrong and I'm right. Or have a conversation and just be open to saying that we don't agree on something. And that's what's been lost, like you said. Yeah. Nobody, yeah. nobody can disagree respectfully. Me and you, like, so, guys, right? Yeah. So, most men, and when I say men, I'm saying this loosely, most men that actually are masculine, right? Mm -hmm. They can have a conversation, or even better, we can get in a fight. You ever got in a fight with one of your friends? Yes. All the scars on my face are from my friends. <laughs> just how it is. None of the scars on my face are from anybody else because nobody's ever gotten that close or, you know, the fight was over before that happened. <clears throat> all of my scars on my face from my friends, and we all shook hands, drank afterwards, even went to the hospital together. <laughs> that It's a different kind of mindset, right? Yes. So if me and you got in a fist fight right now because we had a really big disagreement, more than likely, right after that fist fight, whoever won, there'll be a handshake and we probably have some whiskey after. So a lot of people have a hard time even understanding how that works because they don't like confrontations. Yeah. Even some masculine men. Like, I don't mind a confrontation, but there's going to be a resolution at the fucking end of it. Absolutely. There has to be. Mm -hmm. Because most men, we can't not want to solve a problem. Most men like to solve problems. Mm -hmm. 
They don't like to leave things open ended. They like to they like to finish them right then and there. <clears throat> so uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, we have arguments and discussions in this office ev- almost every fucking day, For and sure. I'm the one usually that starts them because <laughs> we just go over that all the time. The devil's advocate, that is me. I'm the one that just every angle I'll be up everyone's ass about something, mm-hmm. but I think it's important. Especially depending on what it is, like what, what the argument is about or what the disagreement's about. That way, like there's growth that occurs from it. Yeah. Because if you don't see it from every single angle, how are you really growing? Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. But, uh, like I said, Tomo and Nick, I've talked to Nick quite a bit on the phone. Nick is a world class golfer as well. Uh, used to be. <laughs> used, used to be. be. <laughs> he says that. He just picked up a, what did you do? You picked up a club the other day? And uh, hit a shot in front of somebody. I don't know. Well, some we, big we, PGA coach. We jo- we jo- uh, I'm uh, not that good. Uh, you know. You know, honestly, the, 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 my back's just bothering me still. But we're, I'm getting treatment on that. Um, Fucking Tiger I, Woods over here. I'll tell you, the first, I've never had a massage. And this is going to go into, I guess, golf a little bit just for a second. Never had a massage. Had access to deep tissue massages when I was playing golf. And I never played at the highest level either. I just, I just tried. I tempted. I pushed towards that for many years. But I always had the ability to get these deep tissue massages, and I always had it in my head. And some golfers do. Very superstitious. You don't want to fuck with my muscles and the way that they move. Oh. Because a golf swing is all about sequence, just like anything else. Just like in the gym, like when we do, we're doing bodybuilding moves, there's a sequence to the movements. You're, sure. you're using your, you know how to use different muscles, right, to lift weight. So with the golf swing, it's very similar. If you're out of sequence, you're not competitive, you know. So I never wanted anybody to put their hands on me because I thought it would fuck with my, mm. the way that I swing the golf club. Man, I wish I would have let him. Really? I'm paying for it now bad. So I got into other sports after golf. I don't play golf anymore, but my body is just all knots. So I had a guy come over to the house, somebody that works on Tomo and his wife, and he's going up and down my back and my hips and my glutes, and he's just like, this is a disaster. <laughs> it's like, you're an absolute mess. And I'm, I'm clutching the table, and I'm about to just, I just want to tear this guy apart. Yeah. And he's like, we got to do this a lot. Yeah. So after one treatment, you know, wore me out for an hour and a half. Passed out after that. Woke up. Felt like I got hit by a bus. Yep. Just these last two days, too. This was just two or three days ago. Feels like garbage. That is body ins- is just a mess. That's insane. So all the lactic acid getting released in my body, mm-hmm. and I'm just, you know, I feel sick. You know, just whatever. But I could tell that my body's already moving better. I, I'm walking better. Yeah. So I mean, that's that's my brother. He's a sports chiropractor, and like I was always against chiropractic, yeah. and then whenever one chiropractor fixed an issue with he me, I'm like Dr. Clark. Oh, Dr. Clark was raving about it. Yeah. Oh, Jake's an animal. Yeah, yeah yesterday he He's was talking about your brother. Strongest hands yeah. I've ever seen on so a human being. So I can already being. tell that my body's <laughs> going to work better after one session. And I didn't want to do this. I put it off for years. And um, going into going into the golf part now, it's like Tomo's learning how to play golf right now. Oh, really? Just you did something didn't. to do. So you played golf your whole life, but you never did? All right, so listen, listen. All right. Not only is my brother more handsome and younger looking than me, even though we're 15 months, he's really handsome, right? Wait, he's he's only a year younger than you? 15 months apart. Oh, yeah. We're, we're almost yeah, I just, I just look like shit, Seth, because I work too much. I'm sorry. It's okay. I didn't mean that in a Steve negative way. Gray. I didn't mean that in a negative way. <laughs> you are much better looking. He is. That's what it is. <laughs> His nickname on the golf course was Handsome Nick. It's not on the golf course. Though. No shit. God damn it. Yeah. So everybody, please call him Handsome no. Nick when you see handsome him. Handsome Nick. So not only is he more handsome, but he was good at every sport he ever picked up. Uh, so he didn't. He wasn't those one of those kids that played golf from five years old. I started when I was a teenager. He teens. picked it up. When I got my driver's license, I wanted something to do. So, so I, no I, shit. I, I, I had to touch club till I was 16, 17 years old. Oh man, you're one of them. By He's the time I was, uh, by the time I was, I was. 20 i was like i'm moving to florida to pursue golf yeah so wow. i um i tied the course record at the at the club by my house in ohio uh within a year and a half of playing golf yeah wow with the head pro there see that's the bullshit where like uh you just certain people just spend their whole life doing it and then here comes this person that I was just tell you though incredibly uber talented i have mm-hmm. to tell you though i technically my golf swing at that time wasn't good it was okay because i could hit the ball where i wanted to hit it but here's the thing what a lot of people don't know, and Tomo knows this, I spent every day for years, seven days a week, wintertime, two feet of snow on the ground in Ohio, at a heated outdoor range called Airport Greens in Ohio. Yeah. This is fucking wild, but I was the only person there, and the guy that built clubs, his name was Art. I don't know if he's still around. He sat in a shack, a quarter of the size of this room, with a heater, watching like the fucking TV with the hanger on top, building golf clubs. For nobody. Dude had no no customers. 
He, he went there just because he had nothing to do. No family. Yeah. Kept the range I, open. Heaters over top of the range. I'm sitting there hitting balls into the snow mm-hmm. on an overhang for fucking six, seven hours a day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Every day. Every but, but, day. Uh, but still, it doesn't fucking matter. Doesn't matter. There are people that are walking around today that had more talent built up in them for yeah. a certain sport that they never tried. Like, mm-hmm. dude, you're 16 years old. If you would have started when you were younger, I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like, that's yeah. that thing. But at the same time, you're like, uh, there, there's that. Uh, I don't know. There's some type of saying where if uh, there's the best at a certain sport, doesn't even play that sport. Yeah, you know what I mean. Did you ever hear that that yep. like that saying or whatever where. If you never would have picked up a golf club, you wouldn't have known. And you were that just that talented. Never would have, never been in never would have made it to Florida. Never would have. Ha- a lot of things may not have happened. Pretty crazy. It's, yeah. it's really wild. But I don't know. Whenever yeah. somebody's good at golf, I just have to bring it up because I know how difficult. I don't even sport like is. talking about it, man. It's weird. Like I like I don't mind talking about it, you know, between us. But when people bring it up, I'm like, man, because it, it feels like a failure. To, it's like a failure to me because uh, in my yeah. mind, I was, you know, I had like PGA Tour dreams, and I was just playing mini tours. So there's thousands of people playing mini tours, traveling, doing yeah. their thing, playing well. Yeah. So I'd go out and play well. And then there was a time period where there was just a lot of really good Asian golfers coming up, very young. And but I with was the irons, well in my twenties, with the irons, yep, well in my twenties, and all these guys, all these kids coming coming through from you know Korea and wherever they're coming from, their dads were caddying for them. Mm-hmm. Oh no, the shit! The fucking discipline was like you've never seen. Mm. You know, every single putt, every shot was like their life depended on it in a mini tour event. Oh, that's kind of that that pressure and stress that a lot of those guys now. They're at the highest level. Really? Their dad had their hand on the back of their head, like whispering in their whispering in their ear. <laughs> yeah, like you're you know, gonna your die if you make this. Whispering in your ear, like, and I'm looking. I'm like, this is it was intimidating. Yeah. And they're fucking shooting ten under, eleven under par, and I'm shooting four or five under, and just bye, see you later. All right. Playing some of the best golf I could play, and these kids are five, six years younger than me. No oh, shit. Just just waxing everybody. It's nuts. And it it was it was crazy, <laughs> and and that 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 put me mentally out of it i was like this is i wasn't having fun anymore mm, so yeah. I, I didn't i quit i'm not gonna say i quit from injuries that was part of it but i stopped playing because did not enjoy it anymore yeah and that's part of the thing where uh like you said um like it feels like a failure at certain yeah. things but at the same time you know it's part of life yeah and i mean i look at uh, i look at myself and comp competing mm-hmm. and be like man I should have competed more. Like now, I definitely say every day of my life, I should have competed way fucking more. I still more. feel like right now, I, I need to get back into it. Yeah. It's oh, bad. it's motherfucker. It what Dude, do you it, think is going on in my head oh, with it, what the fuck I just did? It burns every day. I'm like, <laughs> I, you can still do it. I'm looking at my, I just, I have pictures I was going to post this morning. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to post them and be like, motherfucker, that's a pretty nasty front lat spread. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you could still compete. And then you're like, but is it worth it? Mm-hmm. And I wouldn't be at my best because personally, I think that I could have competed. Uh, with Flex Lewis mm-hmm. and pushed his ass and created a rivalry within the 212 100%. that the 212 would have been a bigger thing than it is now, even if I never won one. If I lost every single fucking year, seven years in a row to Flex Lewis, it still would have made the 212 that much more exciting. Mm-hmm. And should I have done it? I fucking think I could have, yeah. yes. However, if I wouldn't have did all that, if I would have did all that, yeah. I would not have all this. Exactly. This right here. You know what I mean? So it's kind of that thing where like, I might not have the trophies on the wall. I might not have everything fucking lined up. I might not have, you know, six Mr. Olympia 212 titles. I'm like, fuck, and I wouldn't be able to call myself that. However, I do have multiple thriving businesses mm-hmm. that employs over 50 people mm-hmm. within my hometown community and building something that I know that will be eventually at 75 people, 100 people. And as a business owner, if you have five employees... Woo! You got a little bit of stress. If you got 10 employees, woo, bring it on. That's why I look like shit, Seth. I know. I would look just like you. <laughs> <laughs> but it's those things. So that's where I'm like, man, I can't, I'm, I can't get down on myself and you can't beat yourself up because yeah. all these things have led us into these great positions. Yeah. But getting back into you, before we went on this tangent about, about wel- golf and welcoming, handsome Nick. welcoming everybody to it. Um, uh, you said uh, about how you were going on to this uh, radio show mm-hmm. and about optimizing testosterone because mm-hmm. that's what you do. Yeah. Uh, you, your goal in life is to optimize uh, men and women mm-hmm. to make sure that they are at the highest level possible mm-hmm. to just kill shit in life. You are not dealing drugs to bodybuilders. Nope. That is not your goal. Your goal is to get people to their highest potential level in life and optimize their hormones. And... I personally, 
I'll talk about myself before we get into you again. Um, <laughs> I'm going to talk about me. I'm going to talk about me. We're going to talk about me. But just from my experience, like you said, optimizing my testosterone level is so much more important than just being sauced out of my mind. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about the transgender community and how that's the hot topic. Mm -hmm. Me on 200 milligrams of testosterone a week or 100 milligrams every three to four days in comparison to 750 or 1,000 or 1,250 milligrams in testosterone, or 15. I did 1,500 a week for a minute there. But it was trash. It was it was underground bullshit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? I have ne I've never felt better in my life. Like last year, whenever I was super functional and fuckable, mm -hmm. and I was on point with all my hormones, like just perfect. I thought better. I felt better. I slept better. Everything I did was better. Mm -hmm. It was whenever you do take testosterone, at a certain level, it does change how you think. Mm -hmm. Whenever I take 500 milligrams of testosterone, I think differently than now. If I was to take 1,000 mg, I think completely different. Mm -hmm. I look at life different. I look at my wife different. I look at everybody different. It is a 100% fact. Yeah. Without a doubt. Hormones and your brain, 100,000% tied. So why don't, is there any, is there any, because I don't, like, from a scientific standpoint, we can look sure. at blood work all day. That's sure. what, what you guys do. You look at blood work and say, this is where you're fucked. And I'm like, yeah, I know, I, I know that. But are there any studies, like, how could we measure mental capacity on certain things? You know what I mean? So there, there are signs, and this is getting into the controversial. Yeah. There is a, there's a guy. Um, I won't mention his name because he's already gotten so much bad press, but he's a scientist. Yeah. Okay. So he's a scientist. I've spoken to him on the phone. And he talks about the prevalence right now uh -huh. of all the different things happening with the transgender community. Um, why wasn't this prevalent 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago? You're going to hear everybody, you know, from the transgender, the uh, gay community, all the LGBTQ, all that stuff, right? Uh -huh. Why wasn't that so prevalent 40, 50 years ago? This guy theorizes, and you can't prove it, but this yeah. guy theorizes... Yeah that due to the amount of phytoestrogens in the environment, from all the plastics, from all the food manipulation, all the GMOs, everything like that, um, he's saying that it is changing the brain chemistry of men. And if you look at historical data on mm -hmm. what has happened to men specifically with testosterone levels, yeah. our grandfathers and great grandfathers, ours were in Europe, but you know, if yeah. yours were here, uh, in the United States specifically, the Western culture, we have a quarter to a third less testosterone, or, or, or comparatively, uh -huh. than our grandfathers and great grandfathers. Why did that happen? Food manipulation. Had to be. Plastics in the environment. All of these cell phones, these things. All of these different things are messing with your brain chemistry, the way your thyroid works, your hypothalamus works, your testes are working. So, what's happening? Men's testosterone's going down, estrogen levels going up, women. They're progressing. You know, you see these young women. They look like they're 25-year-old women when they're 12, 16. 13, yeah. 16, right? Mm -hmm. So it's manipulating the hormones, and it's manipulating the way their brain works. So now let's bring it back to this transgender thing. Mm -hmm. You want to start manipulating children's hormones at age 12, let's say transitioning. Mm -hmm. You're giving a female, biological female, a male level of testosterone. What is that going to do to their brain? And can their body even handle it? No. They can't. No. You are a biological female. If I give you a massive amount of exogenous testosterone, your body is not equipped to do that. No. Not equipped to handle it. So what are you doing? Detrimental damage, not only mentally, but physically. You, you're a boy, right? So you're a male. If at 13 years old, I take away your testosterone and I give you a bunch of estrogen, progesterone, and you're going to transition to a woman, your brain cannot properly function because you're a biological man. Your body cannot properly function because it's wanting to be a biological man. So when people say there's a true transition, there's not. No. Your body's not meant to handle it because you don't, you don't have the physical capacity equipped to deal with those levels of hormones from the complete opposite side of the sex. How, how is this even a topic? It, it shouldn't be a topic. It's, is it's, it, it is fucking wild because even for me, a grown man, mm -hmm. whenever I would cycle off, of steroids mm -hmm. i would go into deep depressions mm -hmm. and people and then there's people like oh steroids don't do that they don't create uh you can't go into a depression it 
Are you fucking with me? It 100% does because you used to be pumping a 1,000 megs Mm -hmm. of just testosterone. Let's not count everything else in there. All the other synthetic shit that you're ramming into your body. And then there is a post-cycle therapy that you're supposed to do. And then the post-cycle therapy is also shit underground, absolute dickball trash shit that you're putting into your body and thinking you're going to feel better. No, mm-hmm. because you are getting dopamine dumps from training on sauce. Yep. And now that you don't have any sauce, it's not that you're getting the dopamine dump from the sauce, but from what was occurring when you were on it in the gym. And now you don't get that for eight weeks. You are going to have a bunch of problems mentally, mm-hmm. not even including all the physiological side effects of like having limp dick. Sure. Oh, or well, fucking three quarter chub. Well, who are these people telling you that that's it's. It's not going to matter if you if you jump off or if you get on. I but mean, if you stop eating sugar, the, the gym you have a, there, but you have a yeah, huge but, but, but this is just we're talking general population. Yeah, they like you live. My point is, they don't know. They no, so, and and then on top of that, like even fucking. Uh, but if we're talking about kids, yeah. like even grown men cycling off of shit. Imagine a child oh God. that doesn't even know what the fuck is going on with their body. Like my kid is. I have a two and a half year old. Mm-hmm. I have a nine year old. She just turned nine, and then I have a 15-year-old. My 15-year-old, this is where I have a problem with all the pedophilic and the predators and all this Mm -hmm. bullshit that's going on and and the grooming and all Mm these things. A 15-year-old child, a 12-year-old child, 13, 14, Adeline's 15, she is starting to experience sexual contact Mm -hmm. because she's becoming a young woman. She's, uh, she knows that she likes boys and she wants their attention and wants to Becoming be around sexually them. mature. Yes. This is where I have the fucking problem with the pedophilia, the predators, and this grooming bullshit. Mm-hmm. These children are supposed to experience their sexuality in their own way with other children their same age. Yep. They are supposed to experience that because it is supposed to be a, a wonderful life experience. And are there going to be problems? Absolutely, fucking lutely because not everybody is a fucking gentleman. Not everybody is a perfect young lady. No, there are going to be weird things that occur because it's just how you're going. You're figuring it the fuck out. Mm -hmm. You don't know if this is. I don't know what this is. What do I do? You're supposed to experience it with someone of the similar age group so that that is part of your growth as a young woman or a young man. Mm -hmm. Okay? If you are a 24-year-old, and you are trying to date a 17-year-old, that is a massive gap in Mm -hmm. sexuality maturity. Mm -hmm. So that's where my fucking problem lies. Leave the fucking kids out of it and let them grow and go through all of these different fucking feelings and emotions. And anybody that says that's not a real thing or it should be done this way is full of fucking shit. Usually they don't have kids if they're saying that. If they're okay with it. Yeah, and they're just not not even... not even understanding or accepting the fact that this is how life is supposed to go. Well, I think they, too, they don't understand how things progress. They're just thinking of the one simple thing. Okay, even like the 17-year-old and 24-year-old, like, I don't really see a problem with that. That's what they would say. Well, you're only thinking of those two numbers right now. Yeah. What happens in the progression of that? What like, happens to the, the child or the, or the young adult as they progress? You're 15 years old, 14 years old. And then there is a 20-year-old. Mm-hmm. There is a massive difference. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's yeah. a massive difference. Yeah. We're not talking about a 30-year-old and a 24-year-old. Right. You know what I mean? That's mm-hmm. a, there's a fucking big difference here with this. So, and then, like, we all know that, like, when you're going through puberty, dude, you, I don't even know what's going on with my dick. No. Whenever you're there, I'm like, oh, man, this fucking thing is always hard. Yeah, the wind blows and something comes up. Yeah, it's you're like, like, hey, dude, dad, what is this thing? Yeah. Like, why is my dick always hard? Well... Son, welcome to becoming a man. <laughs> yeah. This yeah. is how this works. And then, like, you are supposed to have that conversation with your parents, mm-hmm. not with the school. Do you want to know what the problem is now? Oh. This. Yeah. That's a big so problem. So access to, access to social media, access to pornography, access to all of that stuff. So they're getting hypersexualized at a younger age because of all of that. And then it's coming in from, so this is, this is the argument from the other side. Yeah, let's hear it. So the argument from the other side, from from the left, from, uh, you know, I don't like to just put it right into political terms, but it is, it really yeah, is. Yeah. Um, from, that, from that side of the argument, they're saying, well, they're already becoming hypersexualized because all of the information is on the internet. So we want to make sure that they understand what they're seeing, what they're looking at, 
and we want to put that in schools so they so nobody will get bullied and everybody understands that there's different types of sexuality. That's their side of the argument. You know that as a good parent, you're supposed to control all that and talk about all that. 100%. But actually, the problem is, is a lot of people aren't good parents. Uh, a lot of people, even, including people that, I mean, like I said, we have 350 kids that come through the fucking doors. Yeah. Trust me, gymnastics is the most ruthless sport for females on the fucking planet. Yep. And we have to break a lot of parents' hearts and tell them that their kid is not going to the fucking Olympics. They're going to be here and they're going to train 20 hours a week and they're going to cry. Why? Because it's supposed to be fucking hard. Yeah. Our job is to make these kids hard and make them fucking excited about winning and getting out what they put in. So that's a hard conversation just to have because a lot of these parents want to tell everybody how wonderful their kids are. Your kids are fucking wonderful. Mm -hmm. However, this is very objective. It's a sport. Mm -hmm. Now, you're not your kid's best friend. I'm the coach. I'm not your kid's best friend. I'm not SJ's best friend. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm his father. Mm -hmm. That means he is going to love me. I'm going to watch over him. I'm going to have a blast with him and we're going to play and he's, we're going to laugh and we're going to do all this. But it's my job to discipline him and it's mm -hmm. my job to guide him in life. And whenever shit goes wrong or he doesn't fucking listen to me, it's my job to reprimand him. Mm -hmm. I run his life. He does not my, run my life. I think that's a big problem with in today's day and age is where if their kids have one feeling, one time, they 100% give in. Bro, if I gave in to all my fucking wants in life, you guys would not follow me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it would be, it'd be crazy. You guys would be like, so Seth, uh, Seth is a complete and absolute degenerate. He drinks alcohol at 9 a.m., smokes cigarettes we, all night we, we long. We might be speaking of you in the past tense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. We might be saying was. Seth was. <laughs> yeah, but, but those are things that like, uh, that's crazy that if you're, if the children have one fucking like, one fucking thought in their head, they're like, I want to dress like a boy today, even though they're a girl. And then all of a sudden they're like, he's a boy. Well, hold the fuck on. Hold the fuck on. It's fine. He can, she can think that it's okay. Yeah. And then just kind of let it play out and see what occurs. Or like, or make them understand that maybe they're not. Be like, I understand you're dressing like a boy right now, but just so you know, a boy has a penis. A girl has a vagina. Yes. That's how science works. Yes. Now this video is going to get banned because we just talked about that. Yes. <laughs> That's how crazy this shit is getting. It is wild. And it's one of those things that there is a lot to understand and open because there are people like, like we have fucking gay people that work here. Sure. We have gay people, straight people, black people. We have, you name it, they're here. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Wonderful. Everybody has different things in their life. But whenever you, whenever you're around other people like this, you're just like, cool. Okay. What's it like? When did you know you were gay? Mm -hmm. Like, when did you fucking know you were gay? Mm -hmm. Please explain to me so I know, like, what was the environment that you grew up in? Did you get bullied? Well, yeah. Okay, cool. That's that's part of life. Everybody's not always going to be a nice person. Stop thinking all oh, motherfuckers are nice. The world's tough. That's what I mean. Like, life you know, is tough. Like, if you're fat, you got made fun of. I got yeah. made fun of for being chub, chubby. I got my nickname was Chubbs. I had the man tits. That was my nickname. It forced me to become a bodybuilder. Everything that we have today came from a fucking experience where people made fun of me, and I grew a fucking complex from it. Mm -hmm. So, was it really a bad thing? I, I don't know. No. Was it? I don't think it was a bad thing. It's okay. I, you, it, it's part of it. I think a little bit of bullying is normal. I think a little bit of harshness when you're a young adult and when you're growing up, I think it, I think it makes you and pushes you to who you're supposed to be. Hardship. You, you, Pete, you're supposed to experience these things in life because not everything is wonderful. Like, like, it's okay. Like, oh, I fucked up massively. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know you can't kill yourself because you had one fuck up. Buddy. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. Life's going to go on. Yeah. Why? This is like the third time I fucked up. <laughs> cool story, dude. Welcome to the club. Yeah, that was today. I fucked up three <laughs> times today. <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've lost fucking millions of dollars at this company and yeah. we didn't give up. You yeah. just keep going. Man, it reminds me of those affluent families like um, Silicon Valley and stuff like that that have mm -hmm. young children that, that have you know committed suicide. They get everything they want really early, no hardships, and then all of a mm -hmm. sudden there's a tragedy in the family or some, they get into something they're not supposed to get into, and there's 13, 14, 15-year-olds, you know, just... Yeah, and, yeah. And, and it's crazy that that actually occurs, and, mm -hmm. and it's like, man, like, so wh wh what's, what's the answer? What do we do? Uh, there, I don't know, but all I know is... Like with what I do and with what I put out on social media every day and being a good motherfucker, mm -hmm. that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Like you're allowed to be one hard, ignorant, degenerate son of a bitch. Mm -hmm. But then at the same time, that doesn't mean I'm, I'm not compassionate. Mm -hmm. 
It, but trust me, if you fucking, if you nick your finger on something and you're crying that it hurts, I'm going to tell you to shut the fuck up. Oh my God, yeah. that's so funny. That's, that's, that's my daughter. <laughs> that's, that's Harper, man. She, she skinned her knee, you know, typical kid thing. Yeah. And she wouldn't walk for three days. Yeah. I was in her face for three days. Oh, you shut the fuck up. You're fine. <laughs> yeah. And that's, literally. But, but that's the tough literally. thing that you got to do. Yeah. And guess what? It's going to, it hurts. Yeah. It now, hurts. Now it's cool when she gets a boo boo. Yeah. Honestly. Mm -hmm. I'm like, look at that. That's awesome. I'm like, I just, <laughs> what, yesterday, <laughs> yesterday we were throwing ball in the office, like them little soft dodgeballs. Throwing them and fucking oh, SJ's running down the ball, them. and I fucking threw the ball. And it drilled him right hit in the him face, right in the nose. Did he cry? <laughs> no. no. He got back up, laughed, and was like, ah, ah, ah. And I'm "Oh, like, dude, if he did that." Oh, well, but the thing is, like, your kids are going. You, yeah. Well, look at who his father is. Oh, I know, I know. Yeah. There Except is because I get hit by a truck. You probably get up and be like, "Ow!" Oh, fuck. <laughs> but it's I don't know. There, you, and I think that it's a tough thing. This thing is the devil mm -hmm. because it's super hard to be a present parent whenever you think your life needs to be better. Yeah. As a parent, it's super tough. And that's why what what your sole goal in life is, is to optimize hormone health for adults so that they can be better in all aspects of life. Mm -hmm. Because if you're a parent, you need to be very present and you need to operate at the highest level possible for your children. Mm -hmm. And then realize that like, how important other aspects of life are. Like people wonder like, Seth, how do you do it? Motherfucker, my shit is not together, but I know that if I do everything I can, whenever I'm in any given setting, man, I'm, I'm pretty fucking good. Yeah. So like, I want to make sure that I'm a great dad and I'm present and I'm around and I'm, I'm, I'm with SJ. Like if whenever, we're, whenever I am, it's dad time, it's time to be dad. I'm fucking dad. Yeah. But whenever I want to fucking be with Hannah and I want to fuck Hannah, I want to make sure my hormones are fucking there so I can fuck Hannah and she mm -hmm. loves it. And I'm still strong, Seth, and everything's great and wonderful. Whenever it's time to hit the gym, I want to hit the gym. Whenever it's time to work, I want to work. People fucking downplay themselves and their capabilities so much. And they let this fucking thing and all the shit that they watch on here just fuck them up. Mm -hmm. Well, don't just forget, they're bought into they're bought into a line of thinking. They're bought into... I'm getting older. My doctor says I need these pills. I need all this stuff. So, you know, I, I almost correct everybody now when people even call us an HRT clinic. Oh, okay. We're not. We're, we're a, we're a wellness, we're a wellness clinic that specializes in hormones. That's really what we are. So we are a total wellness clinic. So when you say we optimize people's hormones, mm -hmm. everything stems from the hormones. That's what I'm talking about on the mental side. So like when we're, we're dealing with, uh, we have a nonprofit we're starting this year, dealing with veterans, uh, law enforcement, first responders, and we are going to try to subsidize treatment for people that can't afford it. Oh, okay. And the reason cool. is because all the data that we show for all these people that have PTSD, depression, anxiety, I mean, 22 suicides a day in the military community. That's a lot. That's insane. 22 suicides a day. There's a place called Mission 22, which is a yep. veteran suicide uh, organization. You know about them. Mm -hmm. So 22 suicides a day. And I'm like, well, let's, let's sample our military audience. Let's sample our military base of patients. Every single person that I spoke to, and I put this out on social media, I got a bunch of responses. I even put it out in emails. Bunch of responses. Every single one of them through the VA, depression, anxiety, medication, suicidal tendencies. Uh, they were gaining body fat. They were doing all this stuff. Can't sleep. Pill, 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 pill. Mm -hmm. They came to us. They optimized their hormones. They're off all medications outside of their testosterone therapy, maybe a thyroid medication. Mm -hmm. They're good. Yeah. They literally went from horrible issues, side effects from all these medications to doing one simple bioidentical hormone that optimized their brain, their, their health, and their whole body. W why isn't that being done at the VA? money big ladies money. and gentlemen big money <laughs> it's money we just took thousands of dollars of reoccurring income tens of thousands of dollars of reoccurring income per month per year whatever out of big pharma's pocket because we solved one problem that's crazy it's not we're an underlying issue we're we're a preventive and regenerative medicine clinic that deals in hormones because everything preventive and everything regenerative is all hormone based your body is a beautiful machine you can cure cancer you can, you can prevent cancer. You can cure all these mental health issues. You can cure diabetes and heart disease. How do you cure all of it? Get your hormones back to when you were 20 to 30. Your body cures it itself. 
what happens is as you get older, hormones start declining. Yep. What starts happening? Start getting body fat, start getting heart disease, blood pressure issues, cancer starts to become prevalent. Why did all those things start happening out of nowhere after the age of 35, 40, 45? Because your hormones just decline, your your immune system just took a shit. That's what, that, and that's my that's my selling point. Like I don't, I fucked myself up when I was twenty years old. Remember, mm-hmm. I started taking gear. From the time I was twenty, I didn't stop. Mm-hmm. I should have, and I would cycle off and on here and there. And then I learned about cruising and all these things. And I'm like, looking back at it, I'm thirty eight. That means for a solid fifteen years, mm-hmm. I was on some serious shit. I never even optimized my hormones as an adult. Yeah. You know what I mean? So when people ask me about all these things, I'm like, okay, this is like, how old are you? Uh, I'm 38 years old. Okay, how many kids do you have? I have three kids. Okay, what do you do for a living? Well, I'm actually the, uh, I'm the project manager for XYZ company. Uh, okay. How long have you been in that position? Probably about three years now. I'm like, is work going good? Yeah, it's kicking my ass, but I mean, <laughs> doing well for myself. I see you live in a fucking half a million dollar home and you mm-hmm. drive a nice truck and your wife has a nice vehicle for herself mm-hmm. yeah but he's shit so whenever you talk to him and you get to it you're like okay what's going on well um i wake up at about 5 a.m every single morning i'm out the door by six on the job site by seven i usually finish my day by about 3 30 but then i stay at the office until about 6 30 and then i come home and, uh, you know, I play dad for a minute. I try to get on my treadmill. Oh, you try to, so you don't. Um, <laughs> and then you go to the gym once a week during, you know, on the weekends. So you probably train about two to three days a week. Uh, yeah, I sleep like absolute dog shit. My diet's just horrible. I eat twice a day, but then I binge at night. Mm-hmm. I'm like, well, oh, you just named pretty much every man between the age of 35 to 45. That's a lot of lifestyle issues. <laughs> and, and But here's the thing. The whole that this is where it comes in. You're like the guy has worked his entire life to live that traditional lifestyle of having a good wife, mm-hmm. having the kids, the mm-hmm. nice home. I got a good job. All these things that we as traditional Americans want to do, sure. but then they put themselves on the back burner because they're just doing anything they can for their families. Mm-hmm. And this is like that Andrew Tate shit right there, where he's fucking going off and understanding that like now at this man's fucking point in his life he is everything that he ever wanted to be and now he's catching even more shit from stuff yep yep it's wild how this occurs but that's where you come in Mm -hmm. and that's where people like me talking to our community is strong 25 to 45 year old men so it's like this is what occurs in life from the high cortisol levels from stress from uh the no training the poor diet the no sleep uh, stress at home, stress at work, stress everywhere you go. And now your kid's fucking 10 years old. And you're like, they got college in eight fucking years. And that's going to be 40 grand a year too. Holy shit. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, all this starts occurring. And even though people are like, oh, it's ten, eight, eight years away. Let me tell you, everyone, now that I have a daughter that is 15 years old and it's three years away, I'm like, hey, this kind of crept up on me. <laughs> but that's where you guys come in. Yeah, I mean, how how many patients do you think we have that are in that exact same situation that's a great question i would say almost all of them (laughs) i mean legitimately what you you explained wasn't it didn't sound nothing was outlandish that was that was i feel i felt like i got called out a little bit on you know a couple days a week where sure sure you know i fucking skip meals and then i at night just you know order a pizza and a sub and yeah we're good (laughs) we ate a pizza last night i was so happy about it (laughs) anyway that's most of them and and they're open about it and they talk to you have to be open about it because then you're not going to get better from it Mm -hmm. but that's where it becomes like the 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 thing where i tell people diets don't work you have to change your lifestyle Mm -hmm. and whenever you start taking uh testosterone you will you are it is going to change how your body operates and you have to be ready for this lifestyle change and Mm -hmm. be like I'm going to get to the, I'm going to eat better. Just start there. Shoot, make better food choices and start working out. You know, what's funny. People kind of do it naturally sometimes. So I, I had a guy and he's like, I want to change zero lifestyle. <laughs> I swear to God, yeah. he, this guy, big business guy, probably made four or 5 million a year. Nice. Clean, killing it. Right. Nice. Drove Ferrari, you know, like yeah, one of those guy. guys. So I'm, we're in Florida. That's, yeah. that's normal that's where great. we live yeah. right now. Yeah. So, you know, so this guy's telling me I want zero lifestyle changes. I don't want to eat better. I'm going to eat exactly how I want to eat. I don't want to work out anymore. I work out two days a week. I do Pilates and I'm like, cool. We looked at his hormone levels. His hormones were shot. He was probably doing 800 to a thousand milligrams of caffeine a day. Oh, bitch. So 
nice. you know, he's living on caffeine, sleeps like shit. He was starting to get, you know, a little bit of body fat here and there. So he's starting to have problems, right? He's mm-hmm. 42 or something like that. So I'm like, you know what? I'm like, let's just get your hormones optimized. He had a thyroid issue, clearly. I mean, his thyroid was shot from all the caffeine. His adrenals were shot, you know, mm. mess. I know that. Yes. <laughs> my life right now <laughs> as i'm reaching for and he drinks, he drinks more <laughs> caffeine my adrenals are in this cup <laughs> yeah so you know he's got all these problems we get him on uh thyroid uh thyroid um i think he's doing t3 t4 mix uh, armor thyroid yeah. yeah i think you take armor don't you yep. so do i so he's taking armor thyroid we get him on testosterone and i think he took a growth hormone peptide the duo blend the uh, ipamoral and cjc mm-hmm. within two months he was feeling so good sleeping so well that he started going to the gym naturally. He's like, my body started to lose body fat and I started to feel a little bit better and I started just doing push-ups and stuff at home and then I wanted to get stronger. He's like, I haven't felt like this since I was 25 years old. I'm like, exactly. There you go. Exactly. So this is go. what we're doing. This is anti-aging, right? Yeah. So we are literally doing anti-aging through hormones where you see everybody anti-aging, they look at the surface level, right? Yeah. Oh, anti-aging, let me get this facial stuff and let me get Botox and all this stuff. All that superficial thing, great. If you want, if you like doing it, that's fine. I know a lot of people that do it. We even do it here at the Pittsburgh Clinic, the one in Wexford. Yeah. So we do some aesthetic stuff because people like it. Yes. But if you really want to go into the anti-aging, I'm doing big air quotes for anybody listening and not watching. Anti-aging is hormone therapy. Why does everybody in Hollywood look the way they do? Because they started the second their hormones went into decline. They get blood tests, I guarantee, twice a year. Yep. Their private doctors are prescribing them. Every yep. single one of them is on growth hormone. Yep. Every single male is on testosterone yep. therapy. They are all taking everything that all of us love. Isn't it crazy <laughs> that they think Brad Pitt's not doing anything oh but just God. eating like a, a, a 50% vegan diet? How about Chris Hemsworth? How about Thor? Yeah. You see him in the last movie? Hey, he's jacked. He's sauce, bro. Let's talk yeah. about, Jake, oh. about Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah. Oh, he was. He was, that was did you see him on the UFC yeah, fight? Was awesome. Yeah. He great. He was he shredded. Never looked like that. Yeah. There's never been a role where he's looked like that. No. But it's, I mean, like that's part of it's for them, for actors, it's part of it. Like, I mean, I'm not even an actor. I was just Seth Ferrosi wanting to fucking become a pro bodybuilder and I was sure. in it. Imagine getting paid 20 mil a movie and they're like, did he take steroids? You know, The Rock is still claiming natural, right? I fucking heard this. Listen, <laughs> listen, obnoxious. I cannot take the motherfucker serious. No. I love him and Kevin Hart together. I think it's like the greatest comedic duo mm-hmm. since fucking back in the day because it's just great and fun to watch. Yes. However, the guy is bought and paid for. Of course. So, like, uh, you know he can't say it, so it's like, why do we even pretend to talk about it? Because you know the fucking dude sauce to the tits. Mm-hmm. He can say he's natural cool. Like, now we just... So, everybody just needs to accept the fact that the dude's bought and paid for Therefore, anything that comes out of his mouth, you cannot believe. And I don't, I don't even want to claim that he's sauced like that. I don't want to claim it because he may not be. You right now, you don't, you want to know how many people messaged me after you posted a picture and I commented on it. Oh, and I was like, and I was like, they were like, oh, Seth is out sauced. And again, I'm like, I'm like, he's actually not. He's just on TRT and a little bit of growth hormone. A lot of growth hormone. Whatever. How many IU's are you on, really? Uh, eight. Okay, so that's a lot of growth. Yes, there's a lot of growth. So, okay. like, so like three of what we would offer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, all right. So you're on a decent amount of growth hormone. But when, I, I mean, I've watched you since you've been a patient. Yeah. You were taking two to four IUs of growth hormone. Uh-huh. And everybody was still calling you sauce. Yeah. So I don't want to claim The Rock has taken trend and taken, you know, 20 IUs of growth. I don't, I don't think he may be doing that. But I do want him to admit, and I would like people in Hollywood to admit and normalize the fact that, yes, I am absolutely getting my hormones optimized because I'm 50, and there is no possible way I can look like this at 50 years old without some medical help. You should be on testosterone therapy at 50 years old because your shit is getting lower, and it's going to help you live longer if you do it. Yes. Nothing wrong with it. I, I, I think with him, he's just he just spent a couple of years just blasting hard, and and it wasn't out there yet because he didn't look the way that he well, looks that, now. And well, now that was, he's cruising. He's well, that, that's my thing is is how much how how I mean the dude looks ten times better than he's ever looked before. Yeah. So that's why it's kind of like it's okay better now than he did when he was twenty five. Oh yeah. So, but for but for me, like whenever we look at it, like I'm like okay, I was two hundred and fifty two pounds at my heaviest yeah. in shape. Yeah. At 245, I had abs, and I was like, okay. This and is you're nuts. three and a half feet tall. Yes. 
I mean, how tall are you really? Five five, five six. Five six. Yes. Shane left at two fifty. But that's five six two fifty. Bro, I can. That's insane. So, but that's the thing with, with where I look at it. Like, I have been training since I was thirteen years old, and from the time I was twenty until I was thirty five, I was running some shit. Yeah. Whenever I was at my peak, I was probably two hundred and forty five pounds, Jeez. fucking in shape, probably around maybe like that 10, 11% body fat. And mm-hmm. right now I'm 212 and a half pounds at about 8% body fat. I'm like, man, there's a big fucking difference. Oh, like, cause it's like, I'm, I'm big now, but bitch, 40 pounds of muscle, 40, 40 pounds on you. That's ridiculous. Cause Bro, you look I massive. Look, I, I, I'm not massive. Well, you look massive. I to know normal people, I but mean. that's what I mean. Like looking back at it, I'm like, dude, it's 30 pounds. Yeah. I you couldn't take even, couldn't even fucking imagine. Oh, I was. That's the thing Bob brings up all the time. He's like, dude, you were a freak. So that's the thing. But what does that do? That means that I'm running ten to twelve. I use a growth. That means that I'm running twelve hundred and fifty megs of test, eight hundred megs of deca, mm-hmm. fucking three hundred fifty megs of trend, three hundred fifty megs of fucking master on, like doing some crazy dumb shit. Mm-hmm. But, but that's, yeah, that's to be a pro bodybuilder. That's what I mean. That's to be a pro. So whenever I look at it now and people are like this, I'm like, guys, like, sure, do I want to? I mean, if I got on fucking trembling right now, it's one phone call away, and I'd be here in five days, and then you all would be like, oh, there's a big difference. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. And that's why, like, I think with him, um, with The Rock, it's like even it, you, like, not even saying it, and I'm like, he shouldn't say it, in my opinion. You should just go about it, but understand, like, like the dude's bought and paid for. Yeah. He is a he is in an elite status. Mm-hmm. Dude's an elite status. Mm-hmm. And it's fine. I mean, if I was, if I could have $150 million as my annual income, I don't know if I'd be able to say no. That'd be a tough one. Yeah. I mean, he just bought the XFL and that's apparently beating out MLS and no shit. NHL. No shit. Yeah. <sighs> Viewership is beating it out. NHL and MLS. MLS is not going to be big in the United States ever. Soccer. No. You know what I mean? Uh-uh. But I NHL? I don't believe it. I don't believe it. <laughs> Listen, I've never seen a fucking thing about it. No, so I've been the XFL. Yeah, so apparently they're getting the talking show. about it. You ever, you ever, you ever talk about XFL within your buddies? No, no, not yet. Yeah, I don't even watch the NFL really though, so I don't. You know, it's sports. Yeah, it's all. It's Dude, just. It's all, we, we got the Browns. It this all. Is, this is Pittsburgh. This is Steelers. This is Steelers. I mean, <laughs> yeah, we're from what Cleveland. Are we have to talk about. Cleveland. That's right. <laughs> uh, so in your in your line of work, um, I guess we got into the most prevalent group of people is that 35 to 45 year old male Um, it's getting younger really it is it's getting younger we're seeing people as early as 22 25 what do you see so what 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 occurs all right i fucked my body up Mm -hmm. i fully accept it i think Mm -hmm. a lot of people do are the people that you are seeing like at that early let's just call early 25 years old sure which is super early You should not be having a hormone problem at 25. Absolutely fucking not. Unless you were like Seth and you were running a bunch of gear or you were taking a bunch of SARMs or peptides or whatever the fuck. It's not always the case, which is the craziest. We're seeing more on the other side that have never worked out before. No, no, no. They've never physically trained before. Yeah, we're talking about people that are completely normal, non-bodybuilding people that are having severe hormone declines at 22 to 25. Get the fuck out of here. They're walking in the door. Well, think about what I was talking about earlier. I know. On what the environment is doing to everybody's hormones. So you think... that? So what do these 25-year-olds come in and say? They're coming in and they're having... 250 to 400 testosterone total testosterone levels yeah. get the fuck out of here and i'm like when i was your age i had 1500 natural testosterone level yeah strong european fucking genetics yeah, right old fucking weird viking stuff so like that's where my <laughs> testosterone level was when i was in my early 20s because i got it tested i was doing that shit way before people were even testing stuff but i wanted to be a professional bodybuilder yeah that was my goal well, when i was young and then what's his name was it don, uh, don. don told you hey if you're gonna start this Get your te- get get your blood. Yeah, you know this was when he was a kid, nineteen twenty. Yeah, so nineteen twenty. I'm thirty seven. I'll be thirty eight this year. So this, this is a while ago. People weren't testing their hormones no, back. No, then. no. So he told me go get a blood test. He said if your testosterone's not maxed out, we'll talk about putting you on something so you can be a pro bodybuilder. Mm-hmm. I get a test it was like fourteen sixty natural total. No testosterone. shit. He's like you're not touching anything. You're basically naturally on steroids now. Yeah. I'm like cool. Didn't touch anything until I was almost 30. Yeah, he basically told you don't fuck yourself up. Yeah. You know, right now. But yeah. now we're seeing these kids, 22, 23, 25, and they're coming in. And they're like, I'm depressed. I can't 
I, I'm, I'm, I can't get to the gym. I don't feel good. I, I don't want to have sex with my hot girlfriend. 25 year old kid. That's a fucking what do kid. They, what do they look like? Do they, are they fat? They're, sloppy. Yeah. A lot of them can come in sloppy. Some of them come and just look really thin, you know, but they're coming in and they know there's a problem and the normal medical community is not helping them. Oh, fuck no. They you don't care. Mean, because it's taboo and they don't know what they're doing actually. When not only that, things. but they're, even if they test their testosterone level, mm -hmm. a doctor, a normal primary care doctor will look at them and say, you're 25, you shouldn't have any problems, so we're just going to leave you at this. Or even worse, what do they do? Prescribe an antidepressant. Oh, yeah. So you don't have low testosterone because you're within the, the, the scale now is what, 250 to 900. Yeah. So 250 is within range dropping, now. They keep dropping it. Yeah, obviously. they keep dropping it lower. So if you go to the military, if you go to the VA, VA, you have to be under 200. I thought it was 400. No. It used to be three. Yeah, I it believe. used to be three. Yeah. Oh, okay. Now it's under 250 standard medicine under 200 for the VA because we <sighs> don't want to prescribe you that shit. No. You know? So Man, if, they're, if, they're if your three, testosterone level is like a 201, yeah, they you are not doing they good. Do so it. if your testosterone is at 201 in the military, yeah. you are considered, quote unquote, normal no, according you're not. to the VA. Dude. No, you're fucking dying. You're an 80-year-old man. No, you're not. But if you're at 199, they'll treat you. Now, here's the more fucked up part. At 199, they treat you. When they retest you, and this makes no sense. And they'll Everybody, take you back off of it. They'll take you back off of it because <gasps> your testosterone went up. So they will then cut you off, which will cause you to tank. And you wonder why suicide rates are fucking crazy. Bro, I just know from taking, taking fucking 500 migs down to 200 migs, mm -hmm. going from there to there is a difference. Mm -hmm. The one thing, too, I noticed, and this is from looking at labs, is if somebody that is in that situation, if they get introduced a little bit of exogenous testosterone and they really need it, their shit can jump up way high. Well, and that's again, what, then you're on the roller coaster I was of hell. Talking Joel. Yeah. Uh, he was telling me about this. He's like, Yeah, I went and got my fucking levels tested and we had to cut it back. And I'm like, Why? And he's like, This was at 1600. Yeah. I'm like, Get the fuck out of here. He's like, Dude, he's like, hyper responder. It's great. And I'm like, No shit. Mm -hmm. yep. That's just how it's it genetics. is. And it's, he's never, and, and I mean, I've, I think I've exhausted my body to the fullest extent possible within everything. Mm -hmm. Your body probably, I mean, because do, you've taken it for so long. That's what I was going to say. Do yeah. you think that there is like a, like, I don't know. I don't know the terminology I want to use right now. Receptor desensitivity. Yeah. Yep. hundred percent. I knew that one was coming from yeah. me. I it was coming that. out. I, yeah. I saw it coming out. I was of just your... getting there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you can definitely desensitize receptors for hormones. Um, what I tell everybody, and I think I've actually seen somebody in your podcast talk about it before, um, certain areas of injecting, mm -hmm. most receptor sites in your body, your shoulders. Oh, really? For hormones, for, for, uh, Get androgens. the fuck out of here. So you have a lot of androgen receptors in your shoulders, a little bit less in your glutes, uh, quads are the worst receptor areas. And then, you know, there are people that pin chest and yeah, weird lats. places. I'm not doing that lats. anymore. Yeah. You know, you, you really don't need it. And don't forget, these are systemic drugs. Yeah. So when you inject testosterone, wherever you inject it, it is systemically going to work. Yeah. So it's not like, oh, well, I'm going to inject my chest and my chest is going to get bigger. Eh, it don't really work like that. <laughs> yeah. You know, in it, my head, it does. In your head, it does. Yeah. It makes you feel a little better. The only thing that works like that was the old um, uh, IGF. One. Yeah, the old IGF one used to have the to real stuff, inject, the real stuff. <laughs> yeah. So now, you know, most of the stuff, the IGF one LR three again, systemic, it will attach yeah. to receptor sites that quote unquote need it. No shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and the shoulders, you see a lot of guys there with the triangle delts nowadays. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. They don't know how to hit them. That's one thing. And that's a crazy thing within bodybuilding that I've always found fascinating. Like I, I'm, I was going to sound like a complete douchebag. I'm a student of the environment of bodybuilding. Like, I loved it because there's so many different factors that come in. You're like, oh, I just got to take steroids and I'm going to get bigger. And it's like, oh, oh hold the fuck on. Mm. Not only do you got to figure out what to take, when to take it, how much to take it, you got to also remember you're injecting it into your body and there's going to be other side effects that just occur from an injection. And can we just talk about the fact that genetics play a giant role in this? Oh, because yeah. Because I am mm. so fucking sick of people young kids yeah. coming up to me in the gym. And, you know, I, I'm not big anymore, but I was slightly bigger uh, a few years back when I still competed. Um, what I'll preface this with one of the best things that was ever told to me was from Steve Weinberger. Yeah. Um, I won my division, didn't get my pro card, and he's like, you're going to get your pro card one day in Classic Physique. He's like, probably in Masters. And he's like, and then you're never going to win another show again. And I'm like, <laughs> ow, what a dick. You know what I mean? And I'm like, that was fucking mean. But 
What it told me was, I don't have what it takes genetically to compete with these big boys in yep. that class. I can't stand next to Chris Bumstead. No. Are you out of your fucking mind? No. He's a specimen. I've stood next to him, and I, I'm like, I need to walk away. He's so handsome. He's so handsome, right? <laughs> He's so handsome, but his genetics allow him to look a certain way. Yep. So when I when I see people, and they're like, I'm just going to take a shitload of gear, a shitload of SARMs, a shitload of growth, I'm like, you need to understand that you have severe genetic limitations. Yes. All the gear in the world is not going to make me, Tomo, look like you, Seth. No. I am never going to have that. Shoulders, nope. never going to have the legs. Nope. Not going to happen. I have genetic gifts and I have other gifts in my personality, in my brain, in my body that maybe you don't have. Yeah. But I have to recognize them. So, you know, sure. when people talk about getting sauced the hell up. It's, like, it's, it's weird because... Um, I can't golf like him. No, I can't either. I never will. Never will. I don't think I can golf like me anymore. <laughs> He's so full of but shit. It's, 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 it is crazy that the, the young community, I feel like there's a resurgence of young men that are lifting weights, and it's yep. a lot to do with these young influencers and all the sauce yeah. and what they think. And it's like, you have to remember, guys, like when you look at me and you're like, oh, like look at him. I'm like, I've been training since I was 13 years mm -hmm. old. I started taking gear when I was 20. Mm-hmm. And from then, I didn't stop for 15 fucking years. And that's risky. And I... Oh, it's risky. No, I'm, you could have died. I'm really lucky. You could have died. That I'm like, yeah. where I'm at. But, and that's the thing. Like, I look at me now and it's like, dude, I don't have to do the things I used to do Correct. to maintain yeah. this. Mm -hmm. Like, if I was getting sauced again, like, look at another guy that I will put in this category is like Branch Warren. Yeah. Like, bro, Branch Warren was my height. He and I look eye to fucking eye. That man was 245 pounds on stage. Jesus. Stage day, he was 245. I got to call and, you with him at Olympia. He and I look eyeball to eyeball. Yeah. That dude in his prime in off season was 284. Oh my God. And I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, look how big Branch Warren is. And you're just like, this is insane. But that man has the genetics to do that. You know what I mean? Like, I, I think, like, just talking to him about the things he took, like, he didn't take anything any more crazy than I. Like, yeah. it was just different genetics. However, because I was a wild motherfucker. Yeah. But he was definitely not as aesthetic as I am. But mm -hmm. the dude was fucking built like a goddamn horse and made me look like a tiny little man, even though we looked eyeball to eyeball. It was mm -hmm. crazy. So I think these young kids have to also understand that genetics do play a role, like you were saying, and time. Mm -hmm. Time. Time, 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 time. Branch Warren was not 284, uh, or he was not 200 pounds, and then 284 mm -hmm. overnight. It took fucking decades. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing that a lot of young kids don't want to take time to, is take decades. Nah, they get, wow. You got to fall in love with the process. That goes for anything. And, and then there's uh, young kids that are, that are 20 years old that are having a lot of success, and then they're talking about getting on gear, and it's like, dude, you can do what you want to with your life. Get on some sauce. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. But understand, everybody that's everybody watching, like you don't have success already. And if you think you're going to get on sauce and then have success, that's not true. Yeah, it takes time. And then there's a whole lot of life experience that goes into it mm -hmm. as well. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, you know, the the whole genetic thing. People forget sometimes. Ronnie Coleman became a pro on fucking nothing. Natural. Yeah, same with Kai Green. Yeah, they were natural. Natural. That's insane. That's nuts. I mean, you know. I look back and I kind of wish that I wouldn't have fucked myself up like I did. You know, but I, let me, I will say this from a medical standpoint. Your labs are excellent. <laughs> They're not that good. The, they're pretty excellent. We, see a, lot per, of, I we mean, see a lot of labs. Dude, I mean, come on. We have, we have 6,000 active patients between oh, two offices. <laughs> <laughs> when I say we see fucked up labs, we see some fucked up labs. Man. So I see some scary stuff from people that you wouldn't expect to see scary stuff yeah. from. Uh, really? Oh, yeah. yeah. So, you know, and like I said earlier, your body's at a really amazing regenerative machine. Yeah. Don't forget what you're taking. You're on a good dose, not a low dose, but not a high dose of testosterone. Yeah. It's not causing you damage. It's only, no. gonna, it's only helping well, you. Well, that's why I was asking about the saturation or whatever the fuck you said. Yeah. Because taking the 100 milligrams of... I know, like, whenever I was getting super stressed out with work and everything, I was only taking testosterone once a week. Mm -hmm. I was just taking 200, 200 milligrams of testosterone in one shot every seven days. Mm -hmm. And then it might be every eight days because I got busy, forgot life, three kids, yep, the yep. businesses, all this really bad because I know whenever my levels would go up and go down and I'd feel whenever they'd break down further and be like, fuck you, Seth. Now it's 10 o'clock at night and I'm like, I forgot to take my testosterone mm -hmm. tonight. 
And then I'm like, okay, so then I know a difference whenever I take 100 milligrams every three days versus 200 milligrams every seven days. Sure. There's a massive that. difference. Oh, yeah. Massive difference. Those frequencies huge. And it, and then that's where it also came in. I'm like, because I'm not taking a lot, but whenever my testosterone levels uh, are, are hanging around that six to 700 milligram or six to 700, mm -hmm. that's my, my, uh, my testosterone. I'm like, mm -hmm. that's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Because I would always wait to get my test done like six days after an injection. Which is good. So you're yeah. on the downslope. Yeah. And that's so, what I wanted to see because I don't know. It's just what I did just to see where it's at. Yeah. So realistically, you're probably optimized in the 900 to 1100 range. Yeah. You know, so you're, there's going to be a little bit of wave. Right. Yeah. But I noticed that whenever if I got my, I mean, if I, if you take an injection of 200 milligrams on Monday and then go get on Wednesday, you go get your labs done. It's going to be different than if I took 100 milligrams yeah. on Monday and then got my labs done on Wednesday as well. 100%. Yeah. 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 yeah, but I mean, the testosterone that you're on, the way you're dosing it, you're obviously feeling good. You're looking good. Yeah. What else are you taking? Growth hormone. Yeah. You're not yeah. taking 20, 30 IUs. You're taking a higher dose. Yeah. Eight. Shouldn't, shouldn't listen, that's eight. common in Europe. Yeah, I'm European. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere back you were. I'm, I'm half Somewhere laughing back back the waist you were. down too. <laughs> yeah. Somewhere back you were European, but they're huge on growth hormone. So uh, the, the one thing, uh, I know I fucked myself up from a, like, uh, from a blood pressure standpoint. Mm -hmm. Like my blood pressure is elevated from where it is. And I noticed that um, like right now, my experiment was I was doing the bodybuilding here for the past 11 weeks. Sure. When I was functional and fuckable, my heart rate, my resting heart rate was like 58 to 62 beats a minute. That's awesome. Okay. And my blood pressure was around like that 120 over 80. Like really good. Perfect, yeah. 120 then if I ate more or I got a little thicker, it was up, it'd creep up to 130 over 80 mm -hmm. and then it just started creeping up. And once I started doing the bodybuilding thing again and I'm, and I'm in it just pumping, a lot of anaerobic activity, mm -hmm. I noticed that my resting heart rate is now around 80 beats a minute. Sure. I'm about, I'd probably say I'm about eight to 10 pounds heavier than I was last year at this time. Mm -hmm. And now I'm like, okay, so... No, I'm taking more growth hormone. Mm -hmm. I don't need to take eight. I should probably be around four. Mm -hmm. And and that's what I was doing last year. And I was not eating as much. I was sure. eating much less last year, taking the same amount of testosterone, but like just doing all that and then working with my body and knowing it from bodybuilding. And I'm like, man, this is pretty crazy that this is the difference in it. Because right now, like my resting heart rate, I'm like, Kind of pisses me off a well, little so bit. Well, so what happened? So think about what happened between that functional and fuckable Seth mm -hmm. and this Seth. Uh -huh. What changed? Muscle. Oh, the amount of muscle that's on my body, for sure. So the amount of muscle on your body, what does your muscle need? Blood. Yeah. So what's your heart saying? I got to pump, pump more. <laughs> oh, for sure. And and, and that, But no, it's really are, logical. That's super logical and super to, to do it. But it's just, it's it's interesting to watch. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, and uh, I worked really hard to be functional and fuckable. And then last year, the reason I wanted to do the bodybuilding and the transition and see if I still got it and do all that was just because at the end of the year last year, I got my ass kicked mentally. Mm -hmm. Like work beat my ass and bodybuilding was just in my head. And I'm like, I want to lift weights again. It made me feel good because mm -hmm. it always did make me yeah. feel good. And now I look fucking wild. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm bigger again. I'm like 212, 214 pounds. Feels good. It's great. But then I'm like, okay, Seth. The most difficult thing is to understand that this is not sustainable. Yeah. Yeah. It's not. And especially for my personality. Like, for my personality, keep doing this. All I would do is want more from it. Sure. Because I already saw it coming. Like, whenever I was doing the low days, I picked up bad habits on low-carb days. Mm -hmm. And then on high-carb days, I'd feel like... <sighs> 600, mix of 600 grams of carbohydrates. What do I need 600 grams of carbohydrates for? <laughs> I don't. That's fucking stupid, Seth. However, when I train the gym, I'm like, brother, you look nuts. Yeah, yeah. You wanted, you wanted that. You got in that, that mentality. That mentality. Yeah. It all came back immediately. Of course. And, and, and there's no like, what's crazy is like, we're, you, what you guys do, you measure it. You just look at somebody and be like, all right, now we have to get on a phone call with this guy and go through all these different things. Mm -hmm. And then with me, like whenever I'm looking at all this, I'm like, th there is no measurable way to understand why all of my old habits came back from like old bodybuilding days. Mm -hmm. Like, because old bodybuilding days, whenever I was competing for shows on low carb days and cycling carbs, like caffeine, mm -hmm. like 
immediately went back to caffeine because I love it. Sure. Kill, I just kill workouts and cardio sessions on it. And then cravings came back because you're, in a sense, starving yourself. Mm-hmm. Low carb days, you're, or you're just, you're not fueling your body as I was with functional and fuckable, like mm-hmm. a well-balanced diet. And then like nicotine became a thing. Interesting. Yeah. I don't, and this is that thing, like the measurable part, like nicotine was always something I used to smoke cigarettes whenever I would compete in bodybuilding. Like whenever I'd need like an oral fixation. Sure. Like it'd be one of those things where I just get nicotine was like the thing where I'm like, yeah, like I'm in it. Get a little, cause you, a whenever you smoke, yep. It's a stimulant and you get a little buzz and you just kind of focus a little bit mm-hmm. different. You think a little bit different. And it's an appetite suppressant. Yes. So that all of a sudden throughout this, 10 to 12 weeks, because I think I started two weeks before the challenge. Yeah, probably about 11 weeks right now. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, like during those times, I had all these weird old, old things creep back into my mind. Like it's not measurable. Well, your body remembers. I know, but that's what I mean. Like how do I measure, remember, like does it remember? Yeah, yeah. But I just think it's funny. Like I immediately went coffee, cigarettes. I was going to say, it's funny how it wasn't one thing. It was one thing that led to another thing that led to another thing. Oh, yeah. And all of a sudden, you were almost like old Seth again for a little Bro, little I could click time. back into my old self. That'd be kind of fun, actually. Mm-hmm. Hence why I need to go back to functional <laughs> and fuckable. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Why well, I need to get back out of this because, dude, I immediately reverted to. Yeah. Like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fucking have this cup of coffee, smoke a cigarette, and fucking get a little whacked and then get ready to go do cardio for an hour. Like, I could. Instantly, I could instantly go back to these old school things I did because back then there was no internet. Is that where you're at right now? Huh? Is that where you're at right now? Or this uh, was before everything you're talking about. That's where you're at right now. No, I'm not smoking cigarettes. No, no, no. Cigarettes. no. no. But I'm just saying, but all, like, I mean, the caffeine, all the other things, yeah, like yeah. The, the training, the food. The, yeah, like yeah. I, because I was so two weeks was I don't know. I was about uh, I was dropping my carbs to see how my body responded. Just because I personally love seeing what the body can do. I do it all the mm-hmm. time. Yeah. I think it's great. I so I was like, let's too. see how far I can yeah. push it. And this is that thing where I'm like, okay, if I drop my carbs, I could be 200 and I was 208.8. I was like 209 pounds depleted the one day. Mm. And Hani saw the picture because I was in Nashville. I took the picture and he sent me a message. He says, you need to go eat some fucking carbs, dude. Because you were like super flat, but I was getting shredded. Oh, yeah. So I did. And I was like, fun, man. This is cool. Yeah. This is so much fun. It's bodybuilding again. Yeah. And then I'm like, it's a slippery slope. It is because all of a sudden that's where I'm like, hey, if I got on a little bit of trend oh. and master on. Oh my God. We had this oh, conversation buddy. last time we were here when yeah. we were working out. And I was just like, that's the worst fucking thing you could do. Oh, I and I know. Yeah. I know. Again, we had this conversation yeah. last year, probably yeah. a year to the date. Mm-hmm. And guess what's still occurring? That conversation. Mm-hmm. And and here I am. I'm like, man, it would be I could I could click back into that mm-hmm. instantly. It's good that you recognize it though. So well, that's that, the fun part. I yeah, think. most yeah. people don't recognize it. Most people can't recognize they're starting to do bad habits again. They just fall right into them because it feels good. That's when you talk to people and they're like, "I don't know why this is happening." It's like, "Bitch," because you're not paying attention. <laughs> but but again, you, you're not paying attention. That's it's an, it's it's immeasurable. It's unmeasurable. Yeah. You can't like you can't fucking understand why people do the things they do, mm-hmm. and it plays such a role in what happens to our body. You know what I mean? Like you're, you're almost working from a spot now where now say you, you go back to functional and fuckable, and then you start to see that creep back. Now you know what the next, now you know what's coming, right? Yeah. So you can go through that whole process and be like, I got to fucking back this up, right? Take a step back or you want to go wild. Be, and and you know you I know, I, and that's why I'm like, no, you're not going to do it. Mm-hmm. However, it's like what, like with the people that you work with, with everybody that you work with, you're also going to have extremists. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like this guy. Of course. So whenever you get somebody and all of a sudden you you go to get their blood work done and it comes back like fucking through the roof mm. and you're like, hey, we so I love our practitioners. So, you know, obviously we're not doctors. We're, yeah. we're the business side of it. I love our practitioners because I kind of warn them. And I'm like, listen, oh, yeah. I said, make everybody be really honest. Yeah. I said, because I'm I'm I, I'm from the bodybuilding community. Yeah. You know, and. Is I, I know all these people. I'm like, I know what we do because I was that person too. Yeah. I got sauce to the gills quite a few times to do competitions. Yeah. So I'm like, they're going to do things like this. We have several pros, ex pros that are with us. We have several pro athletes that are in, you know, yeah, I'm retired. talking about like, yeah, retired from like NFL, you yeah. know, NHL, uh, professional golfers. And I'm like, these guys are going to try you a little bit. Yeah. When you see blood work come back, ask them to be honest with you. 
And I tell all the patients, I'm like, just be honest to practitioners. This is all HIPAA protected. Yeah. We're not judging you. We just want to know what you did so we can help you fix it. But if you lie to us, the, the relationship kind of gets strained. We yes. don't want to help you if you're lying to us. Yeah. So, you know, if you, we have these pro bodybuilders that come to us and they're like, I'm doing a competition in six weeks. This is an IPB pro. Do a competition in six weeks. My blood work's going to get a little wacky <laughs> after this blood work, yeah. after this blood work is done. And, you know, post show, they do blood work and we're like, whoa, what your kidneys and liver are not liking you right now. Your hematocrit and hemoglobin are crazy. Nuts. You know, they, they tanked all their hormone levels because, you know, you go off testosterone yep. before the show. And I had a practitioner come to me and you're like, hey, your buddy, is, like, he, he might need to go to the hospital. I'm like, just, just get him back to normal. <laughs> He's, get him a bunch of glutathione. Let's clean out his liver. Let's get him the right, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. the supplements, the health supplements. Get him back on TRT. And within four to six weeks, they're back to normal. Like I said, amazing healing machines our bodies are. So once you get them back to optimal, people are like, Oh, I did so much damage. I probably took 10 years off your life. I'm like, if you would have kept going and, yeah. and kept progressing this and never fixed it, probably right. But if you fix it and if you allow your body to start healing things again, your body regenerates all your organs. Which is pretty wild because everything has a shelf life. The way I look at it, like my kidneys and liver have a shelf life because like I beat the fuck out of it for so long, but I know that there's like, cause everybody, I think everybody has that. Sure. Like even if they don't take a bunch of shit. Sure, sure, sure. Like they're like, oh, like they're just predisposed to an issue that they have in their family, like genetic history in mm -hmm. the family. Like, hey dude, everybody in the family gets liver cancer. Uh, that's yeah. probably the worst thing I could have ever fucking heard from somebody. Yeah. But then it's just like, I don't even know how that occurs. Yeah. But um, for me, that's one thing that's tough because uh, now that, I've recognized that I did have some issues. It's like, I feel like not a hypochondriac, mm -hmm. but I feel like a little bit is there. Like, man, like, am I freaking out about things that don't exist or like, cause I, I do. Like, I, I, like me watching my heart rate, like that freaks me out. Yeah. Sure. And like, listen, a resting heart rate of 80 beats a minute is not bad, mm. but a resting heart rate of like 58 to 62, man, that's really fucking good. Mine's 48. Yeah, fuck off. I, I, mine's, it, mine's, mine's much higher than his. Yeah. Really? Oh, and he good. and he does a crazy amount of aerobic exercise. He's a cyclist. He, he does. Yeah. It's just and, and my genetics. thing is, I never paid attention to it when I was younger. So I didn't even know, like, how it creeped up or what I would actually be, like, what it should be for me personally. Mm -hmm. Like, because I think that 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 your your base analysis of yourself of, like, uh, is is you need to know that so how you progressed or where you're at. Yeah. And if the medical system worked the way that it should, everybody would have that. Yeah. When you go in for yearly checkups, they would check everything. Yeah. All your hormones, yeah, the best all is your when levels. Yeah, we talk to a patient like, "No, I already got labs 2 weeks ago." I'm like, "Just no. Send yeah. them over and I'm going to tell you why these labs fucking suck." Yeah. Labs yeah. aren't like, like they're not looking at anything. They're like the doctor's concerned about your cholesterol that's 2 points over and they haven't addressed the issues that you're actually having. And then they try to give you cholesterol meds, and then they say you're depressed. And, and then you walk out of there going, this was the biggest waste of time. Mm -hmm. And now I have a script for depression medications. And do you – what – the people that you see, are there more people that you see that are uh, – like, what is your – like, what's the ratio on client base? You you talking is there, about like, a lot of regular, normal-ass people? It's, all, it's mostly blue-collar. It's, mostly, it's, blue it's mostly working class yeah. – a lot of blue the collar AC guy, the mechanic. Yeah. The no shit. Oh yeah. oh yeah, cops, firefighters, military guys, people yeah. that work in factories. Really hardworking motherfuckers, right? It really is. That's that's no that's shit. really what it is. And yeah. you know, people are like, "Oh, you're you know, you, our offices look fancy." Well, of course, they look fancy. You know, we're in fancy areas. We're in Wexford. We're in uh, Dr. Phillips Windermere in Orlando. Yeah. And we want to have a nice presentation. Yeah. But we're affordable for everybody. And most of the people that are looking for this Service industry are working their asses off and they want to feel better. It wouldn't look good if we looked like a, a manufacturing facility. That's what I'm guys. saying. Like if you're walking into a, like a fucking factory floor, it's not going to look right, you know? So, you know, we make it look really nice, but it's not, it's, it's people want to walk into nice places. Yeah, and, and not only that, it's like, guys, if I was, if I was the owner of this place and I did not dress nicely and I looked <laughs> yeah. and I had a hoodie on, you'd probably look at me a little bit different. Yeah. Yeah, There's so too many of those places out there right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, plenty of those, plenty of those kind of places out there. But yeah, I mean, most of the client base that we have, they're normal working class people. And what does normal working class people have? Normal working class problems. Yes, they have the normal problems. They don't have enough time in the day. They don't have a lot of energy. 
they're working sometimes paycheck to paycheck. They're not saving a lot of money. So what are they trying to do? They want to be able to spend time with their kids, spend time with their family. They want to sleep efficiently. They want to work out efficiently. They want to work efficiently so they can make more money, get a promotion. We, we have so many stories of people like, you know, getting their hormones optimized. I'm able to play with my kids. I saved my marriage because my wife and I are having sex again. Yeah. You know, and sometimes if one person comes in, the spouse comes in sooner, soon yeah. after, because now one half of the conversation, one half of the relationship. You work with females too? 100%. Yeah. yeah. I would say almost 40% of our patient base is females. Get the fuck oh, out yeah. of here. Yeah, it's just been going up and up. Yeah. Yeah. Most of them are actually seeking out Dr. Clark. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so most of them are a lot of a lot of them. I think it's I think it's 40 or it's almost 50 50 in Pennsylvania. Yeah. And then in Florida, it's maybe 70 30. OK, you know, so but I mean, the females are the ones that get the most benefits yes, from this. 100%. Stuff. When you optimize a female's hormones, their testosterone, estradiol, progesterone, they literally blossom back into where they should be. Yeah. You know, especially if they're in a little bit of later age, getting into pre peri postmenopausal stuff. They, I'm talking about, so you think about a postmenopausal woman, right? Yeah. You ever hear like the stories like, oh, she completely yeah. changed. She's oh. not even my mother or grandmother yeah. anymore. It's a, or, or my wife. Horror is, stories about personalities. Horror story. Personality goes to shit. Why did that happen? Well, they just went through a severe hormone dip, all of them. So everything dips at menopause. Yeah. Of course they're going to change. So every single doctor that is seeing a woman going through menopause, their immediate solution to fix everything that is going on is... Optimize the major three hormones, progesterone, estradiol, two main hormones for women, and get their testosterone back up. Their energy is going to be better. Their mood's going to be better. Their mindset's going to be better. All of the issues that happen postmenopausal for women, bone density issues, breaking hips, yep. right? Huge problem for women. Yep. Heart disease, dementia. Can I ask a couple of stupid questions? All hormone related. Not stupid. Go ahead. Uh, so like menopause mm -hmm. is something that women go through that they have to go through yes they are going to go through it okay every woman goes through it. so whenever they go through it mm -hmm. um they go through it would that mean that like they shouldn't fuck with their hormones at that time i absolutely would optimize your hormones going into it mm -hmm. it's going to not only stave off all of the nasty symptoms. What is menopause by definition do you know so it's it's basically it's basically the end of the fertility uh, ability in women. Okay. So they no longer will ovulate. They no mm -hmm. longer will have uh, menstrual cycles. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a new term for men called andropause, which is the declination of testosterone in men. They call it male menopause. Used to call it a midlife crisis, right? Yeah. What does a guy do? Divorces his wife, gets a Corvette, finds a young girlfriend trying to fix the problem. Yeah. Problem with testosterone. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. You know, he thinks the Corvette's going to make him feel better. He thinks the 30 year old bimbo is going to make him feel better. It's not. It's his testosterone level. He's trying to fix a problem. He doesn't know what it is. Women are very in tune with their hormones because they go isn't through it. A, crazy that those the isn't it crazy that both of those are recognized by personality traits mm -hmm. rather than actually like anything? It's personality. Yeah, like he's a piece of shit. She's a cunt. Yeah, he's fucking this, and she's a fucking stupid bitch. Yeah, she's annoying. She's fucking miserable. hot all the time and just miserable. Miserable, mean, mean. And miserable he's out people. here just fucking trying to go do trying whatever. to find anything he can to put his dick in. Yeah, why would he be doing that? It's pretty. It's pretty but it's wild. But it's just it's a personality thing that always gets me that that unmeasurable personality. Mm -hmm. But it's actually a hormone issue. Hundred percent. So with women, like whenever they're going through that or they're postmenopausal, like. Uh, hormone treatments would help them. Oh yeah. yeah, it's. I'm not talking about helping them. I'm talking about completely changing them as a person back to how they were pre-menopause. But so, and from my understand, or just from me thinking or playing devil's advocate here, like w because it's just them no longer being fertile. Yeah. So uh, as the fertility ends, uh -huh. right, they stop uh, ovulating. They, so they stop dropping eggs. They stop menstruating. Uh -huh. And what happens during that menopause time, all their hormones tank. Yes. Because that's, they're basically, their time is done, right? Yeah. So their time is done. All their hormones start to tank. Man, it's kind of crazy you put it that way. It, their time is done, which in a sense would mean just this is from a caveman perspective of life. They're useless. I knew you were say how that. long? <laughs> Jesus. So how long do you think humans were actually supposed to live? But that's what. Okay, that's what I'm getting at, dude. This we're going back to like a, a very 
you know, before we were a sophisticated society yep. with all these different things. But like, and again, if a man, like when does a man stop being fertile? Does a man mm -hmm. ever stop being fertile? They're not supposed to. So, but that's what I mean. So then therefore, like the whole, the whole reason for life is to reproduce, mm -hmm. right? We're animals. Continue. Yeah. We are an animal of the environment. Like, yes. We still, that's why we have all, that's why there's all these different fucking. And that should be okay to say that. But yeah. in this fucking society. Yeah. It's but it's not. wild. But it's wild. Like, because whenever you went back to olden times, mm -hmm. you know, before we even had electricity or mm -hmm. even really understood fucking fire, uh, <laughs> like, you know, whenever she would go through that, right, she would be, in a sense, useless. Well, they basically turned, they turned into matriarchs basically helping the younger women have babies yes. and you know yeah. they turn into like midwives yeah, I know and things that, like that. that's that's right i didn't mean that everybody i'm not a fucking no no, no you're misogynist. you're not wrong I know, though you're but what i'm wrong. saying is just how that looking at it from that perspective is pretty wild yeah so therefore like uh, a woman would in a sense feel that way mm -hmm. like that that what what is this or i, I mm -hmm. this personality trait of like oh, i'm just just miserable now mm -hmm. like uh so like getting her back on track with hormones is it's not gonna, it's not we're not re we're not making mm. eggs and all that shit again mm. we're just making sure that her her uh mood and her way of life and her body your physiology is operating at a higher level correct yeah 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 i mean you know going back on that uh you know did the women become useless at the menopause stage let's bring it to today's terms what is valuable about a woman to a man oh boy we went down this road huh i mean Think about it. It's yeah. all it's all hormone based, but yeah. think about it. What do, what is the most valuable man in society? What what is he like? He's usually hyper masculine. Oh. He's usually pretty aggressive. He's usually a go getter, trying to get things uh, done. They're successful. So those men, you know, are that's that's a success thing. Men have no inherent value in the beginning of life. Zero. We have to build it. Women have all inherent value in the beginning, and they lose it as they age. So their value literally decreases as they age, where men usually increases because we're just building. Yeah. We're builders. It is it is crazy that that I don't know, it is just it is absolutely wild to think about because like <clears throat> that's why that's how society got all fucked up, dude. It's hard to even break down to such a minimalistic one point or anything like it because mm -hmm. It is fucking insane on where society is today because like everybody's everybody if if everybody knew the meaning of life, mm -hmm. we would not be having any conversations or be in any weird societal cultural standards or yeah. issues. No. Because the meaning of life is what everybody is trying to figure out. Mm -hmm. They're trying to figure out why they're here. What is the meaning? Why am I here? Why what does my existence mm -hmm. mean? That is the most insane thing to ask any one individual because sure. everybody's answer is i don't know well there, there's an no answer yeah yeah trying to figure it out and even if you have uber success in life mm -hmm. let's say success like i have wonderful mm -hmm. family businesses money all these things and mm -hmm. i'm like but well, what am i doing here what, what what am i supposed to do yeah is what's this, the point is this what i'm here to do if it is, it's like, oh, I don't know. Like, maybe I should do more because I feel like I could do more. If mm -hmm. I accomplished all this by the time I'm 38, I feel like I could do more by mm -hmm. the time I'm 42 or by the time I'm 48. But what happens if you don't, Seth? What happens if you turn 42 and it's not, it didn't get better. It actually got worse. Mm -hmm. So now you're fucking useless. Now you are a piece of shit. You failed in life and it's not worth it. Whew, we're going right. through some shit. And then it's just crazy because everybody has their their minds work at such a high level and all these young kids that are trying to do great things and be popular on here and it's like no don't be popular on here be popular and present in your own life in real life yep. person to person interaction all these things mm -hmm. and just continue to build take life slow and go through these things because some people don't understand their purpose or meaning or value in life until later on and later on well these devices cause depression oh without a doubt yeah. these devices are dopamine pumping it's dopamine wild. pumping technology that is constant and you're on it all the time and so am i yeah but we have a purpose for it yeah he hates it can't yeah. stand it well it's funny that you guys brought up whenever you got in here hey we had a really fun conversation on the drive over here yeah, mm. yeah. like what happens if everything ended right now yeah what happens if the internet goes away right now i love those conversations what happens if all electricity goes away what happens if the chinese and this is possible 
We're, can we, do we have tinfoil hats? Anybody have a tinfoil <laughs> hat? Like funny, a would you like to see something? Do you have oh one? Gosh. Okay, so Seth's going to find a tinfoil hat, apparently. It was, it was a, a gift. gift. It was. <laughs> I could. Fantastic. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> this was an actual gift. Okay, so this now that. a gift from a friend. Uh, he not. came in. He came in, and we were having a conversation. It was not a podcast, but we're having a conversation. And I was like, "Well, actually, I wear a tinfoil hat." And he's like, "Do you?" And I'm like, well, "I mean, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I'm just a logical fucking regular person that has half a brain yeah. that can think and not and not put myself and all of my feelings in front of everything. Like I'm just. <laughs> I somebody on TikTok said this the, just the other day. They were like, uh, they were like, if I. I'm going to buy a home in an area. I'm going to get all the comparables of all the other homes in the area. Area mm-hmm. That would make me a smart buyer, right? That'd make you an educated buyer. Like, hey, I'm going to sure. learn what's going on in the area to see if this house is going to increase in value. Mm-hmm. Should I buy this home in this area? However, when it came to the vaccine and all of that, raising one question, mm-hmm made you a fucking conspiracy theorist Mm -hmm. raising one question just it didn't make you it made you a fucking a a crazy bastard you weren't even able to be like oh my god like you're you're trying to gain information no you're a fucking asshole Mm -hmm. you are a piece of shit Mm -hmm. so uh, so whenever i was talking to the guy we were in here having a meeting Mm -hmm. and he's uh he's like i mean i actually have one too so then this dude (laughs) he sends this it's it's uh one of his uh under here is a company that he works with he said I, I sent seth a new hat and it was wrapped in foil oh, it's perfect so i have not taken it off yet i left i just leave it in my office yes, and i'm like you, this is fucking great you need to pull it out for more podcasts probably yeah yeah i mean so if we're going to go down the conspiracy theory of what actually happened over the last few years um you know america is the most dangerous population for globalism okay most dangerous globalism me you know so i i think all this was orchestrated in foil hat yeah I think all this was orchestrated. I think all of this was purposeful. I think uh, it's for a globalism push. They want to see who's going to be compliant and who's not. The most uncompliant population in the world is the U.S. You know, and we're not talking about how many people got the actual vaccine. It's a large amount of the U.S. population got it. But the amount of uh, the amount of people that were not really wanting to comply with all of these orders, most are in the U.S., um, if you go into African continent, they don't care about them because they, they yeah. feel like there's not enough money and ammunition and things yeah. like that for them to do anything anyway. They're already abusing them. It, it, it's, it's they a, have control of them. They have control of them already, already so it doesn't ahead. matter. So if the Chinese, who are very much into this globalism, or if the EU, which don't get me started on that whole fucking problem, but if this globalist agenda wants to halt the most dangerous population, which is the Americans, who are not going to comply and have the most guns yeah. per capita on the planet, what if an EMP went off in the United States? What if the Chinese or the Russians or whatever just tactically EMP'd? <laughs> go ahead. Oh, God. There you go. Back on. Tactically EMP'd the entire country and just put us back into the Stone Age, what would happen? What would happen in this country right now if somebody did that and we had no internet, we had no shipping supplies, we had no communication, we had no cars. EMPs will kill your car battery. You can't do anything. Yeah. With, you can't drive. Yeah. So what's going to happen? Yeah. People, so there's there's a person that theorized this. There's, yeah. Oh, really? Oh, there's preppers. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I know there's preppers. There's, so there's preppers that theorize it. These guys are scientists oh. and well, sociologists. Okay. They said that most of the population in the United States, 60% plus, would die within four weeks. Holy shit. Four weeks. Because no way. This is why. I need to see this study. Most of the population, I'll send it to you. Most of the population. Turn back on. We'll put Sorry, that back on. We're going to need it. That's going to suppress your testosterone. <laughs> <laughs> so most of the population lives in major cities, right? LA, New York, things like that. How do those cities actually get food, get clean water, get anything? Because they have the worst sewage problems. Bro, you actually, we actually, when we were in New York, when we were in New Jersey, New York area, mm-hmm. I said this. I said, look how many fucking people are in 10 square miles. Yep. yep. So yeah. those people are going to starve to death. 
They're not going to have clean water. They can't grow food. There's nothing to hunt. No, there was no fucking dogs were shitting on the fucking sidewalk. We're like, how can you have a dog in a concrete jungle? Like, there's no grass. Well, that happens. The looting is instant. The looting is instant. It's, it's instant. So as soon as that EMP goes off, yeah. looting is instant. All chaos starts to happen. After the looting is done, the second thing that's going to happen is anybody with any power, aka guns, are going to start feeding off of the people that are weaker, that don't have the guns, don't have anything to defend themselves with. In a city like New York, none of the law-abiding citizens have guns. All the criminals do. So now you're in a fucking criminalized society where only the criminals have guns. Nobody else can defend themselves. All the law-abiding citizens are fucked. They're going to starve to death or they're going to be killed by other people. They'll be eating each other within a week. Really what I think. This is what this guy theorizes. Man, I, is it in a video or is it in a... It's, it's, in, a, it's in a video. And oh, I, think I, got actually, I think actually Joe Rogan talked to him. Most people, no too, shit. Yeah. most people too are just going to join, right? The militias. Like if you know you're weak, you have to, you have to you be have to with the people that are stronger. You're going to join the militia. They have the guns. They have but the this food. guy, this guy theorized four weeks. Yeah. Four weeks. Well, think about Total it. Chaos. If there's no clean water supply, people are going to get sick. They're going to get dysentery very quick. They're going to die. Yeah. Right. So sickness is going to be huge. Uh, can't get medicine. In he there. wasn't talking Nothing. about mass murder like everybody's going to yeah. kill each other. No, no, he's, no, he's talking no, about, no. Well, I mean, dude, he's talking most people are going to starve to death. Dude, people don't go a whole day without eating. Go fucking try to go a month after yeah. eating McDonald's every day for ten years. You're fucked. So you think got about a four weeks. That's a month. That's a long time. Yeah, so you got seven. Time. You have seven days. You can realistically survive. Probably more like four, but seven days you can realistically survive without food if you have a decent body fat supply, and you know you're not too muscular. You're fucked. You know. So <laughs> I mean, I'm okay actually. I'm good. <laughs> well, no, you're good. But if you're in the middle of the city with no protection, no guns or anything, yeah, your dead. body's gonna be you're gonna you're be dead. starving instantly. Your body's eating way too many calories. Yeah. So most people, you know, with no clean water and no real food supply, they're done. Four weeks, done. People shitting all over the place. 60% sick sick of the population potentially dead in four weeks. Yep. Everybody else is going to click up, join gangs. And you know what they're going to do? They're going to come from, where? how far are we from Pittsburgh? 20 miles? Yeah, 25 miles. Mm -hmm. 25 miles, what they're going to start doing, they're going to leave those cities because you can't find anything there. They're going to start coming out here. They ain't going to make it. They're going to try. Yeah, they can make it. So they're going to try, and they're going to start coming <laughs> to large properties, farmers and people with cattle, and they're going to try. And guess what those people have? Guns. Guns. You aren't coming near me. That's, that's what we were saying. I'm, said, I'm, be, it would be lots of fun. Well, that's what, that's what you were saying. The question, whenever you guys were like, we're like, wonder how Seth we would do in this. We were excited in the car. We were giddy about it. Yeah, it was, getting, mean, it was, getting, it was getting fun. Well, it's funny because, like, uh, I mean, I think about these things, but I didn't know there was, like, somebody that talked about it. Oh, yeah, yeah. I never researched it, actually. I just thought about it in my own head. He even went through statistics of how much of the food supply is actually shipped into these cities. Well, that's what I mean. There's a lot of statistics that you can go right into. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you come out to me, like, I am literally a 50 to 55-minute drive with mm -hmm. no traffic from the city. Yeah. Like, where I'm at. I'm in the fucking sticks. I'm in the middle of fucking podunk shit. And let me guess. You have a well? Yeah. So you have a well? You yeah. have septic? You don't, you're, yeah. you're good. You're we off have, grid, basically. Solar panels. You're, you're going to have, going and, the house. you know, if you got solar panels and you have a battery bank, you can get yeah. some electricity. Yeah. That'd be dangerous in a post apocalyptic society because people will see your light from a long way away. Yeah. But, they, but they're welcome to come. You don't really I got need 25,000 rands ammunition. You just don't expose what my house. You don't really need the warehouse. You don't really need electricity to survive. You no. really don't need it. No. You know, or wood burners. Yeah. yeah. Got it's candles. Fun. Lots of fun. You got candles. But, but my thing is, it's just, it's, uh, like, um, I mean, do I think that it would ever happen? Mm, it might. I wouldn't put nothing past nobody. However, like, uh, I don't know. I wouldn't put it. I wouldn't put anything past these people. I think that we're in for a fucking wild ride. I don't think that anything is going to be crazy. Uh, nothing dramatic is going to happen within a certain like short period of time. I sure. Agree. But I think that if we're in 2023 now, mm -hmm. look at 2018. Look at 2016 compared to 2023. Oh, yeah. 2016 to 2023 is way different. Oh, well, yeah. a lot can happen in a year from what we've noticed, right? Oh, yeah. So, I mean, I I'm, I look at it like 2043. Like 2043, 2053, mm -hmm. we're still alive. We think. Well, <laughs> theoretically. <laughs> theoretically. We're still alive in 2043. Yeah. But like 2053, 2043, mm -hmm. like... Those are those are the movies that we were watching, mm -hmm. like Blade Runners and all that. Oh, and yeah. it's like, man, this is pretty crazy that like these times could occur. Mm -hmm. the, some of these are the very beginning of these movies and things, these futuristic movies that we watch, like 20 or, or, or let's say 2143, mm -hmm. 100 years from now, 
bro it's fucking nuts i mean I, look at the 50s compared to now yeah i think i think there's probably some type of apocalyptic event coming yeah. in our lifetime you think so i do i do only because only because i just see what's happening with what these companies what these large corporations are doing look at the ai bots look at chat gpt look at yeah. what Look at what the electric, uh, the electric car craze. You, yeah. you, you know the EVs can all be shut off, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. So they can be shut off. You see, Ford just patented uh, capability for all of its cars that if you miss a payment, they'll shut your air conditioning off and lock you out of your car. No fucking way. Sort of God. So cool. I mean, it's fuck. so cool. <laughs> <laughs> this fucking shit's getting wild. You know. So I'm looking. It is. I'm looking at that patent, and I'm like, yeah. I'm gonna really hang on to my carbureted C10 Chevy and uh, make sure that it's I not can. Not carbureted anymore. Remember, you just fuel. It's got a fuel injected, but still. Carbureted. Yeah. So they, <laughs> but it's not hooked up to a network. Yeah. So they fucking. They have a patent out. Patent. They're they're. Exp- I mean, you got to think about it. And now look at. Remember how they used to like uh, block you on social media and stuff yeah. like that. So now think about it this way: you have an AI bot, ChatGPT. Yeah. Right who can basically find all information in a split second. We were talking about it last time. Bob and I were talking about it on the podcast. Yeah, I saw. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So think about this. They're going to comb your social media, which is all monitored. Yeah. In an instant. In an instant. <laughs> they hear you, Seth, made a video right, about something that they don't like. Yeah. And now they're like, mm, I don't like that. We're going to affect his social credit score, which, by the way, is coming to the United States, whether or not anybody likes it or not. Um. Social credit system is in China. It's been there for a long time. They now want to bring it to the U.S. What social credit score is, it's basically if you do something against the uh, larger machine and they find out and they don't like it, they shut your heat off. This is happening in China now. Shut your heat off. They will lock you in your own home. They will stop your food deliveries. You know, pro- they restrict travel can't go anywhere you're basically on house arrest and they can starve you to death if they want you to they can shut your water off so think about it this way you're driving your car oh boop, boop, boop. get to your house your car is going to be shut off in 45 minutes and you will not be able to use it for five days now you're not just banned on instagram and facebook for five days you're not just on a break there they take your car away they shut your gas off i mean it makes sense that why they would be doing this and exactly plays into like that the theory of 20 years from now, mm-hmm. how things will be different. Because mm-hmm. you know? they don't care about the 2024 election. And you know what's going to be crazier? Just like we talked about in the beginning of the podcast, our kids are going to be used to it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because they're, they're conditioning them. They're being groomed it's, and conditioned to accept all of these things because this is normal life for them. Now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's kind of what I was saying about the progression of things. It's like when they throw something out there and, and say there's a bunch of adults at the table and some are like, well, what's the big deal? Well, the big deal is not right now. The mm-hmm. big deal is what's coming. Well, it leads to that. And that's what uh, the one. So Adeline had the opportunity to cheat on a test. Mm. Adeline is incredibly intelligent. Mm-hmm. Like Adeline is taking AP courses as a freshman. She is sharp, dude. She's wow. smart. She's intelligent from a book standpoint. She is sharp from a street standpoint. Like the kid's just on it. She's not a fucking retard. Kid's mm-hmm. smart. Um, <clears throat> so... Um, She's very good at math. Math is her shit. Math and science is everything. So the science test, Adeline, and in our house, you know, we're hardworking motherfuckers. Mm-hmm. Like she grew up in a different environment. She knows what bad feels like. She's, she's been through a lot. So she's going to take her biology midterm. And she studied all week because she had a gymnastics meet, which we traveled for mm-hmm. that weekend. So she read on the plane. She completed all her work everything the study guides all the shit did everything for her comes to take the test and the test is online okay oh shit it's an online test and you can cheat you can take you can you can look it right there no you can look it up right there on the internet oh like it's on the fucking computer and you can look up the answer like google things adeline did not Hmm. okay everyone else on the midterm did got like 99s and 98 percent and adeline got a 96 but she didn't cheat. Damn. And then I'm learning and I'm like, I'm like, yeah, Hannah's telling me all this because she's telling Hannah. Sure. And I'm like, hey, why didn't Adeline like cheat? Like, why didn't Adeline take advantage of it? Mm-hmm. And she said it's because she doesn't cheat. And I'm like, <laughs> so wait a minute. We I raised, cheated so hard. We raised, <laughs> we raised the kid so good that she wouldn't oh. cheat when she had the opportunity and saw other kids cheat. Hmm. So then I'm like, we're at dinner. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, 
like, Adam, it's like, how'd the midterm go? She's like, I got a 96. I'm like, okay, great job. That's pretty good. I'm like, how'd all the other kids do? She's like, they cheated. I'm like, how'd they cheat? And, the, and then the open, the whole open book thing came. I'm like, Adeline, I'm like, why didn't you cheat? And she's like, because then I wouldn't have learned anything. And I'm like, but okay. I was like, so you could have cheated and got a way better grade and would have been way better. And she's like, yeah, but it wouldn't have benefited me. Like, that's not how life is going to go for me. I'm not going to be able to cheat. Ooh. And I'm like, damn, motherfucker, you're a bad bitch. It's like, nice, you know, in my head, I'm thinking these yeah, things. Hell yeah. I'm like, all right. I was like, Adeline, I was like, I was like, I understand where you're coming from. I'm proud of you. Um, cool. All right. Yeah. Then just left it at that. And in my head, I'm sitting here thinking, this is fucking wild that this kid had the opportunity to do something but didn't. And meanwhile, like in life, these things are going to come up. Sure. But it's just crazy that she didn't do that. So, yeah. I don't know. That's some, that's some good parenting. But kids, the kid's a fucking savage. That's some yeah. good parenting. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, there's listen, there's going to be a lot of problems happening in the near future. Like Nick said, I don't think it's going to correct. I don't think it can correct. Yeah. I think we're on a trajectory to have a pretty nasty fallout. Yeah. I don't think anything. I mean, I, I like to think that things uh, will get better, but I don't know. I don't know. Everybody walking around. I, everybody's walking around looking like they're straight out of the fifth element. That movie. It's a great movie. So I'm just like, I love Bruce Willis. What the fuck is happening? Those people don't do a 180. They don't fi- They don't, they're not going to figure it out. They're going to get fucking weirder and we're, we're going to have to deal with it. Yeah. Okay. So it's, I think it's just going to be all I'm going to do is continue to live my life the way I exactly. do. That's I, I, I want to continue to be a good motherfucker. There's going to be way many things that come up that just drive me insane. However, if everybody was just the best motherfucker they could be, exactly. none of this would occur and be very open minded. Like, I mean, I wish I could have conversations with people that on here that uh, that are transgender. Mm-hmm. I would love to have conversations mm-hmm. like Sean Ryan just had on uh, this guy named Chief. Mm-hmm. They call him Chief. He had like they have like a six and a half hour podcast. Wow, bro, I'm listening to it now. Incredible, wild, because he was a Navy SEAL that transitioned. Oh, I heard about him. And then transitioned back, I believe. Yeah, yeah, transitioned back. Fucking ins- Oh, dude, it's a wild podcast. Wow. Really cool. But um, no, I think I'll just I think the whole key is most people that are especially watching this. Yeah. Think like us. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. But most people just need to. I, I tell him all the time. I say, all we need to do is make a, make as much fucking money as we can. <laughs> That's it. Make as <laughs> much fucking money as we can. Buy property. Yeah. Buy assets. Assets. Buy, th- buy guns. Buy ammunition. Buy yeah. food supply. Make sure we're okay in case something catastrophic happens. Employ as many people as we can and help them make more money. Mm. Right? There you go. If we keep doing that as individuals... The rest of that other crazy shit's going to weed itself out eventually because something is going to collapse on that side. Yeah. No, it's it's crazy because that means that very, 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 very hard times would have to occur in order for that to happen. They're coming. Oh, yeah. That's what I mean. Like, in order for yeah. in order for there to be any change, hard times are going to have to happen. Yeah. Where it's like, but like, for, like you just said, that's all. I want to make as much money as I can, employ people, create a culture that's wonderful for people. However, if you don't think that I have a su- food supply in my house, mm-hmm. ammunition... Guns, if you don't think I have, I'm prepped for anything at my house, mm-hmm. go bags. I mean, there's a couple other things that are pretty wild at my house. Like, I mean, I just have them because I would like to be prepared. Mm-hmm. Because if anything does happen, I would like to live, put it this way. Let's say there is an apocalypse. I want to live through it yeah. just so I can experience it. Yeah. Let's say there is a fucking nuke that goes off after so long, after some type of wild shit occurs. I just want to experience it. Mm-hmm. Because that means that everybody else is also in the same boat with us. Yeah. And I just want to see what happens. I mean, I guess I'm a man of the experience. And let's be let's be real. We want to win. We want to win the apocalypse. Ugh. I want to win the apocalypse. For sure. I don't know what that means. I don't know. I want to win the apocalypse. It'd be it'd be wild. Yeah. But everybody, I mean, gentlemen, this has been a blast. Thank you, brother. I think a lot of people are going to enjoy just listening to this podcast this just because podcast. it was up and down and all around. But um, I want everybody to know that they can call Aspire Rejuvenation Mm -hmm. for any hormonal needs that they have, wellness needs, Mm -hmm. call them. These are, uh, your best interest is actually in, your best interest is in their best interest. 100%. That's that's what we're here for. We're here to help people. It is affordable. It is not bludgeoning people over the head from a financial standpoint. Mm -hmm. You work with everybody, male, female, uh, athletes, Mm non-athletes, regular motherfuckers. Mm -hmm. Um, 
I can't thank you enough for everything you've done for me and also coming in to talk today. Yeah. Thanks for having us, brother. It has been a blast. Absolutely. And as always, everybody, make sure you continue to be good motherfuckers. We'll see you.